Chapter 40 The Role of a Head Chef, 3, You Are Listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 40 The Role of a Head Chef, 3, He Evaded Kaya's Gaze and Zhou Minjun Fell in His Thoughts Did Kaya originally become the team leader? At least, it didn't happen in Zhou Minjun's memories. Did it change as I came? It was understandable. Because the butterfly effect wasn't a word that existed in vain. Saying that history changed because there was one more ball added, wasn't a weird thing to say. Alan opened his mouth. The two team leaders has been selected. Come to the front. Jacob Simpson, and Kaya Lotus. Alan looked at them slowly. And then opened his mouth. Are you confident? No, Kaya didn't hesitate for even a moment and replied. Her eyes that seemed fierce because of her makeup, seemed all the more fiercer. If a person that didn't know her saw her, they could think that she was angry, but Jo Min Jun or Chloe knew what kind of person she was as they were always together. That it was a nervous face. Kaya's character was like a porcupine. That the more afraid she was, she acted all the more stronger, she had a bad tendency to act like a villain. It would be good if she did something about that character of hers. Jo Min Jun felt sorry for Kaya. But of course, it wasn't in a situation where they could relax. Although she was living a peaceful life in Grand Chef's house, her real home was in the ghetto. Reality was still the same. But of course, many things would change after this program ends. Before making the teams, first, there would be a survey. Each of the participants would have to stand in front of the team leader you want to team up with. At those words, everybody glanced at Kaya and Jacob, and started to move their feet slowly. And the results were as expected. There were six people with Jacob, and ten with Kaya. And from those ten there were Joe and Jun, Chloe, Marco and Anderson. Jo Min Jun looked at Anderson with unexpected eyes. He whispered. I didn't know you would come here. Through the first and second episodes, the image they made Anderson and Kaya have, was that of rivals. At first, they weren't conscious of each other, but could it be called hostility? It was a weird image. That's why it could only be unexpected for Anderson to join Kaya's team. Anderson replied. The odds are higher here. Because it was too honest, Jo Min Jun couldn't find the words to reply back. It was just as he had said. Kaya was a better chef than him, and the skills of the participants were quite good. Because right now, there were Marco and Chloe with their respective level 7 skills. And Jo Min Jun that was known to have an absolute taste. In the other hand, Jacob Simpson wasn't a participant that particularly got any attention. His character was cool, but the competition wasn't so light as to follow him with just that. Jo Min Jun looked at Jacob's level. Jacob Simpson, cooking level. 6 baking level. 5 tasting level. 6 decoration level. 5 it was ordinary overall, and didn't have any special points. But it doesn't only require skill to be a head chef. Anyways, even Kaya was unable to perfectly take the role as head chef. Maybe, he thought that a person like Jacob, that had a friendly character was more suited to it. But of course, saying that someone had more advantage wouldn't influence his decision. And the reason he chose Kaya wasn't simply because she stood out more. He was Kaya's fan, and right now, he was her friend. He didn't know how Kaya thought of him, but at least, he thought like that. Jo Min Jun looked at Kaya. What kind of thoughts would this porcupine-like girl be having? At that moment, Kaya rolled her eyes and looked at him. She was asking with her eyes. What are you looking at? Jo Min Jun too replied with his eyes. Just so. Kaya's gaze became sharper. However, they couldn't properly start the stair fight. Alan was raising his voice. The team leaders have to appeal themselves for each of the participants. Who wants to start? BDNVL.M Jacob raised his hand instantly. Alan nodded and made a hand gesture. Jacob coughed and took a step. 
And he said with a voice filled with momentum. I'm Jacob Simpson. Probably, there would still be people that don't know about me. Because I still couldn't show you something special. No different reaction could be seen. However, Jacob didn't sulk and continued speaking. Since small, I have grown and looked at my father's back that was working in the kitchen. Although he didn't command someone cooking, he knew well how a head chef had to act. Please, believe in me. And I'll certainly repay you. And that was the end. Alan nodded and looked at Kaya. Kaya. Come up. Kaya let out a sigh and walked towards the judges. And she slowly looked at the participants. After hesitating for a while, she finally opened her mouth. It was along with her usual provocative gaze. I won't be appealing myself. Do as you wish. Come, or don't. Is that the end? Yes. What else should I say? Kaya talked like that and turned her back to Alan's perplexed face. Jo Minjun let out a sigh inwardly. She cared about the camera and negative comments about her, so why are the words that come out from her all like that? Is it some kind of defense? He couldn't know. Jo Minjun grabbed the mic in his fist and whispered in her ear. Why are you acting so spoiled? Shut up. Don't act like you are my appa. Kaya said sneering. Jo Minjun asked again thinking like don't tell me that. Are you acting like this because you think that you became the team leader because of me? At that question Kaya glared at Jo Minjun for a while and kept her mouth shut. Chloe hit Jo Minjun with her arm and when he turned back, he intersected his arms and shook his head. It meant that she shouldn't bother her. When Jo Minjun clicked his tongue and got away from Kaya, Chloe whispered in a low voice. Don't irritate Kaya when she's sensitive. I'm not trying to, Minjun, Chloe. Concentrate. As they were about to start conversing, Alan shouted loudly. Chloe's cheeks blushed and she closed her mouth. Alan looked severely at them, and then continued speaking. You can each select one person at a time. But, in the case where the opposing person denies, the opportunity passes to the other team leader. It was a simple rule. Kaya and Jacob stood in front of the judges. Alan opened his mouth. Decide the order. However, the person that picks second can ignore the right to deny you. Who wants to go first? I want to. Kaya raised her hands without hesitating. Alan looked at Jacob. He nodded his head as if he agreed to it. Saying the truth, even if he got to pick after Kaya, the right for him to pick a candidate forcefully felt better. Because, even if got to pick first, if he got refused it would be meaningless. The moment Jo Min Jun heard the rules, his thoughts got complicated. What would happen if Jacob picked him? No, there wouldn't be a, what would happen? Because Jacob could ignore his right to refuse him. Because absolute tasting was a skill that aside from cooking, was a really useful weapon. However his worry was all in vain. The next moment, Kaya's voice was heard and it ended with his worries. Min Jun. Come here. It wasn't even a proposal. At her expression that was confirming that he would come, he let out a forceful laugh. Of course, when he was told to pick a team, he chose Kaya. But looking at her, that just recently was acting like that, to call him as if it was an obvious thing, he felt it quite funny but at the same time he felt good. Jo Minjun didn't hesitate and nodded. And at that moment, there was a person that had a bigger smile than Jo Minjun. It was Martin. Martin was smiling brightly while looking at Kaya and Jo Minjun that were inside the screen. However he put it, the relationship between the two was good material to pick for the viewers. He had already mentioned their relation through the previous announcement chapter, and from those who had viewed the first chapter, there were many that cheered for Jo Min Jun's and Kaya's relationship. At first, he just thought of making them look like a couple, but there were just too many precious scenes between them to throw away. It was also when Kaya was doing her disqualifying mission. And the appearance of Kaya, when Jo Min Jun grabbed her mic and whispered to her, 
made his heart beat and seemed cute and sexy even for him. But not only because of that would Martin be this happy. The absolute taste that was revealed at the last mission, and the geniusness of Kaya that was usually emphasized. When they were together the reactions would soar to a new height. Martin wanted to immediately fall asleep and wake until that scene was broadcasted. Of course, there was also a person that didn't like Martin's actions. It was the PD that was next to him. He let out a sigh and said. Aren't you liking this too much? In the first place, this is a cooking program, so if you focus too much on romance, I wonder if the identity of the program is going to get destroyed. If you add a kiss scene in an action movie, does it become a mellow movie? This is the same. Just because you put in a romantic scene doesn't make you unable to concentrate in cooking. The case where the identity is destroyed is only when a different story is transmitted. Some people might say not to add scenes that are not cooking in a cooking program. But those were only words of a certain someone. The viewers can't get satisfied with just cooking alone. The drawing system that was implemented was also proof of that it needed a fun factor. You wouldn't know if it was a documentary. And to sloppily make an entertainment program more heavy was a stupid thing. And clearly, Martin wasn't a stupid person. Those two are going to be in charge for this season's ratings. The screen is made by the casting director, but the scenes are given by the participants. With that meaning, those two are specialists. It's to the point that they make me wonder if they aimed for it. Maybe he was having fun, but Martin's words got longer. The youngest PD shook his head and turned his head. Jacob was thinking about who to take as his teammate. Alan pressured him with a calm voice. Jacob. Choose now. Who are you going to nominate? Wait a moment. Jacob was deep in his thoughts with his brows frowning. Actually, the one he wanted to take was Joe Minjun. An absolute taste was an outstanding ability for all kinds of team missions. Because he could precisely judge and evaluate their dishes. However, he was taken by Kaya. For Jacob, it was as if plans got ruined from the start. He looked at each of the participants that wanted to go to Kaya's team. Because it was an obvious thing to take a participant in her team forcefully. And at the same time, their skills had to be good. The candidates were simple. Chloe, and Anderson. They were the participants that were claimed to be winning candidates. And aside from them, the ones he wanted to pick would be Joe Minjun and Kaya. Precisely speaking, he was paying attention to Joe Minjun from the start. Of course, when he claimed that Kaya was going to win, he also attracted attention. But that was different to right now. Absolute taste. An ability that everyone dreamed of having, but in the end, they couldn't possibly have. However, Joe Minjun was a person that did have it. He wasn't normal. He would be different. He couldn't help but think like that. And didn't people that were really prideful go to Joe Minjun begging him to try their dishes? But it didn't have any meaning right now. Because the ones Jacob could pick were Anderson and Chloe. Anderson's Western cuisine and Chloe's Chinese cuisine. The more he thought about it, Jacob got more inclined to one option. In this mission, the team's harmony was more important. So he couldn't help but prefer Western cuisine. I will go with Anderson. Anderson flinched for a minute, but he didn't show bad manners like frowning. Joe Minjun laughed and said. Bye bye, Mr. A. The role of the head chef, too, and translator. Subak proofreader. Mailed. Chapter 41. The role of a head chef, 4. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 41. The role of a head chef, 4. Anderson could only wonder. Was he going to refuse or not? But looking at Jacob's eyes, it was obvious that even if he did refuse, he was going to be taken by force. And if that did happen, he would only hurt his teammate from the start and waste a forceful move. In the end, it seemed that he didn't have the right to refuse. Anderson moved. Jacob laughed and shook Anderson's hands. 
Thank you for coming. Who are you going to pick next? Let's think about that after looking at who Kaya chooses. They both directed their eyes to Kaya. Kaya was looking with a complicated face to the people that were in front of her. If she had to choose someone she was close with, then those will only be Chloe and Marco Kaya hesitated for a minute and opened her mouth. Chloe. Come here please. Phew. Thanks. Chloe let out a relieved sigh and walked towards her. But the one left was Marco. He sent a nervous expression. However Joe Minjun didn't worry. Because Marco's skills weren't properly revealed until now. Because the other participants only knew that Marco had a little skill in baking. So he thought that there would be no way Jacob was going to pick Marco. Marco. I will be grateful if you come. So at Jacob's words, Joe Minjun couldn't help but get surprised. He had never imagined that Jacob would actually choose Marco. And that was the same for Marco. He couldn't do anything and just stared at him. However, Marco's decision was already decided. He forced a smile and walked towards Jacob. Although Jacob could take him by force, it wasn't a good thing to decline. In the first place, even if he didn't have the right to take him forcefully, Marco was a person that didn't know how to decline to a person that said that wanted him. If things are like this, then the forceful move has no meaning. Joe Minjun let out a sigh. Well, didn't the judges also know of that and gave him that right on purpose? Because all of the skilled chefs couldn't be gathered in Kaya's team. When the 16 people found their own teams, there was no one that declined the proposal. Kaya picked from the participants that chose her, and Jacob had the forceful move so they didn't think of declining. It was a bit unfortunate for those that didn't wish to be on Jacob's team, but in the end, it was a good result. At least, they didn't get hurt, and could balance the overall skills. Emily opened her mouth. Good. The teams are decided. Then, I will now announce the theme of the mission. This mission, Emily paused. But nobody was curious about what she would say next. Because it was really obvious. When they split in two, they could only think of one reason for that. Emily laughed as if it wasn't fun and said. Well. Everybody should have expected it. It's a full course. Saying it in French, it would be a haute cuisine. But of course, there's no need to make it only with French dishes. You have to make a full course that's similar to haute cuisine. Nobody got surprised. They just let out a sigh or looked at Emily with an excited face as if they had known all along. Joe Minjun was one of the excited people. Full course. Haute cuisine. All of that was a chef's romance. Emily continued speaking. Of course, I won't ask of you to design your menu and prepare right now. The time limit is tomorrow. Consult with your teammates and design your menu. And there's one thing you should keep in account. We aren't going to be the judges tomorrow, but you have to set your dishes for a total of 40 people, all from different social standings. The losing team will do the eliminating mission, and three of those will leave Grand Chef's house. It had always been like this, but the word eliminate made them feel chills down their spine. Emily laughed while looking at the nervous eyes of the participants. Alan that was next to her opened his mouth. This will probably be the hardest mission you have ever had. I will give you one tip. Think a lot, and share your thoughts. If you just draw a painting you thought by your own, you will only end up staining the drawing paper. At those words, Zhou Minjun unconsciously looked at Kaya. Would this stubborn girl be able to draw a proper picture? After the announcement of the mission and the composition of the team ended, the teammates along with Zhou Minjun, gathered in the lobby of the fourth floor. Of course, it was to debate about the course meal menu. Hugo, from Mississippi, opened his mouth. Dark curly hair with dark eyes. The characteristic of a Spanish white man, showed on his face. Joe Minjun just listened at his words. How are we going to divide the parts? First, tell me the what you wish to make. Kaya said bluntly. 
but everyone just exchanged glances and couldn't open their mouth. There were many things they had to make. Salad, soup, risotto pasta, etc. It was a bit embarrassing to take on something easy, and it would also be burdensome to take on the main dish. Zhou Minjun opened his mouth. I want to be in charge of the appetizer. Dessert. Two wouldn't be bad. Only, I can't make ice cream or pudding. Because baking is not my specialty. He did think of making the main dish, but it was hard for him to use the recipe composition ability properly when a steak-like dish became the main dish. But of course, he could get in charge of making the steak, and pass his recipe to another person. But these people gathered all had good cooking skills. You wouldn't know if it was evaluating their dish, but they wouldn't allow another person to pass on their recipe. So because of that, he wanted to make the appetizer, which the recipe was the most important. Kaya nodded with an unconcerned face. Fine. What about the others? Looking that you aren't speaking, I can just take it as you are okay with everything, right? I want to make the main dish. A fish one. Chloe hesitated but ended up raising her hand. Even if she was bright, she was also really careful. The words to be in charge of a main dish didn't easily come out. Because it was the same as becoming the protagonist. But of course, as it was a team mission, there was nothing better than attracting more attention, but even so it felt different. Kaya nodded and said. The person who spracks first gets it. Does someone else want to make a fish main? Kaya looked at all of her teammates, but no one opened their mouths. Thinking about how difficult it was to handle fish, it was understandable. From trimming it, to cooking. A dish with no low difficulty was the fish. It seems like there are none. So Chloe will be in charge of the main fish dish, okay. But how many main dishes should we make? Two. Three. Hmm, at that unexpected question, Kaya got panicked and couldn't reply. Saying the truth, it could only be like that for her. Because she had never eaten a proper course meal. There were times where she did make sloppy course meals in her house, but that was only an imitation. She didn't know how a course meal should be composed, and what rules it needed to have. Kaya rolled her hair with her finger and rolled her eyes. She was the kind of person that didn't hide if she knew or didn't. Zhou Minjun said next to her. In my opinion, I think that doing three would be good. Kaya has to do the generalization, and we have to make eight other dishes. Honestly, making salad or fruit doesn't require too much effort. So wouldn't it be better to focus on the main dish? He says so. Kaya forced herself to put on a calm face and looked at her teammates. Fortunately, there was no one that wanted to bully this young team leader. Because they also saw the broadcast, they vaguely knew what kind of past Kaya had. There was no need to point out that she didn't know about coarse cooking. Joanne opened her mouth. She had curly blonde hair that reached up to her shoulders, and she seemed just like someone that came out from a 1920 American magazine. She was a white girl that enjoyed old fashion. But what is the team leader going to do? If you become the head chef, should you make a dish? Kaya couldn't immediately reply and glanced at Jo Min Jun. She found it hard to answer it by herself. Because she still didn't know the role of a head chef. Her eyes were yelling him to help her. Jo Min Jun opened his mouth. Honestly, it's difficult for the head chef to also cook. Only with checking how we are doing makes her busy. But of course, it would be good if Kaya's cooking was included, but it's tiresome. Is that so? Joanne nodded as if she had been persuaded. Kaya was just glaring at the table. No, perhaps, she was only looking at it, but her eyes and her makeup made it seem like that. Kaya opened her mouth with her sight fixed at the table. I want to go to the bathroom. Minjun, let's go together. Right. What? Jo Minjun just replied casually, and looked at her as if he had heard something wrong. And that was the same for the participants. Jo Minjun forced a laugh and said. 
Go. To bathroom. With me. How perplexed must he have been to say words separately. Kaya nodded with a calm face. Yes. Bathroom. It's the order of the head chef. Follow me. After she finished saying this, she immediately walked towards the bathroom. Zhou Minjun looked at his teammates dumbfoundedly, and stood up while reddening his face. Chloe pulled from Zhou Minjun's sleeve. And whispered to him in a low voice. If Kaya does something, yell. Understand. And are you going to rescue me? Nope. Just going to watch. Chloe talked like that and laughed teasingly, like a child. Looking at her laughing face, Jo Min Jun couldn't even get angry. It was when Jo Min Jun wanted to take a step. I will go for a while. He didn't even have the courage to look at the expressions his teammates were making. But when he went to the public bathroom, Kaya wasn't present. It was at that moment. A sound that was hitting the wall. Kaya was standing in a hallway that was separated from the toilet by a short distance. She pointed at her back. It was her lodging. Even before Jo Min Jun could say something, Kaya got inside her room. Jo Min Jun hesitated for a moment and followed her. Although it was her lodging, he was unfamiliar with going in a girl's room. Is this the bathroom? If you have the urge, just go. There's also one inside my room. I'm not talking about that. Why did you say that so suddenly? Telling a guy to go together to the bathroom. The atmosphere got weird. I'm sorry. Looking that Kaya was apologizing puzzled him. She was not the type to usually lower herself. Jo Min Jun let out a sigh and said in a softer voice. He could guess why Kaya had called him like this. I think that I vaguely know why you called me. But why me? There's also Chloe. Just so, it's more comfortable for me asking you for help. But don't misunderstand. It doesn't mean that you are easy. Kaya said with a serious voice and lifted her right hand as if she was making an oath. I will give you a lot of lesson fees. With what? I will make breakfast every day for you. At least, until I get disqualified. At that simple and charming proposal, Jo Min Jun laughed. And then he opened his mouth. And if you win, are you going to make it for me forever? The role of the head chef, free, end translator. Subak proofreader. Mailed. Chapter 43 The role of a head chef, 5, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 43 The role of a head chef, 5, only after he had finished speaking did he realize that it was something a 30-year-old man would say. But Kaya wasn't particularly bothered by it. She was a girl that grew in the market. She was already accustomed to those kinds of jokes. Looking at Jo Min Jun's face being unable to beat the embarrassment and getting more awkward, Kaya glared at him. Although there aren't cameras in the halls, there are in the rooms. Don't forget that. Ahem. Anyways, what did you want to ask me? Although I want to ask you something, I don't even know the basics. Just think like you are teaching a newbie. Jo Min Jun let out a groan. Although he did say that he was going to teach her, he wasn't well versed in that luxurious meal, in that full course. The things he knew right now were few things he had acquired through the internet or through real experience. He started to slowly explain in a rather low voice. Kaya put a dumbfounded face at times, and at others, frowned. Excluding common words like, yes, I understand the only time she opened her mouth was when she was being explained about the Garrett service. So, I could see it as cart service, right? Yes. You can think of it as bringing an almost completed dish and finishing it in front of the customer. But wouldn't manpower lack, then? We need someone to do the serving anyways. We will have to make the main dish completely from the start, but for desserts or soup, you can prepare it beforehand. Ichem. The conversation continued that way. Of course, they couldn't make it long. 
because they couldn't say that they were going to the toilet and be there forever. But just because of that, it wasn't that they ended it in a short time. When ten or so minutes passed, Kaya and Zhou Minjun went back to their teammates. Did you go well to the toilet? Fortunately, I'm safe. At Chloe's question, Zhou Minjun replied while laughing without strength. Some of their teammates looked at the two and laughed. They could guess that Kaya used the toilet as an excuse and went to receive a lesson. However, there was no need to point that out and bother her. Because only looking at the two of them acting like this was fun enough. Joanne rolled her blonde hair in her finger and opened her mouth. While you were in the toilet we organized our thoughts a bit. The main dishes are going to be sea base, turkey and asabuco. Aside from asabuco, they are all familiar ingredients. We can't cook with unfamiliar ones. And it's not that an Epicurean is coming, but customers from various social standings, so I don't think that it would be good to present unfamiliar dishes. But well, the final decision is the head chef's. I don't have any objections. Because all of you decided this, right? Kaya talked like that and rolled her eyes to the top right. It seemed like she thought of something, and she opened her mouth after pausing for a bit. Deridong. No, Garrett in service. I think that it would be good doing that. If there are 40 people, then it would be at least 10 tables. Ah, but are all 40 people customers of the blue and red team? Kaya frowned. Chloe clapped her hands as if she remembered something. Now that I think about it, I already asked that to the PD, listening to him, it seems that they are going to eat both of the course cookings. It seems that they will be eating a considerably huge amount of food. Ah, that's not it. They are going to split in half and in the afternoon, they are going to eat one team's lunch and when it becomes night, they are going to eat the other team's dishes. You should have explained it earlier. Kaya grumbled. But Zhou Minjun could understand. Because in the end, it was a broadcast. They couldn't explain all the small details in camera. It was at that moment. Hugo lent a piece of paper to Kaya. She flinched a moment and received that piece of paper with a nervous face. Hugo said. It's a recipe we made by ourselves. Take a look. Zhou Minjun also reached his neck next to Kaya to check the recipe. It wasn't that outstanding because it was designed in a short time, but it did have a structure. The moment he read the lined recipe, in front of him appeared the average cooking score along with the composition score just like before. And Zhou Minjun's face became rather dark. The cooking score was 6. And the composition score was 5. It's not good. The one who spoke wasn't Zhou Minjun, but Kaya. She continued talking while frowning. Putting aside the positioning of the dishes, the recipe of all of the dishes are not good enough. Honestly speaking, just by looking at the recipe makes me lose my appetite. Do you want your dishes to be returned by the customers? If it was like usual, Zhou Minjun could have stopped Kaya, but Zhou Minjun agreed at her words. Although it was composed hurriedly, it was a low-quality recipe. Kaya opened her mouth. First, it gets strange since the main dish. Roasted turkey with handmade mustard. Do you think that the customers would want to come here to eat a luxurious three-minute dish? God. Oh my God. Who thought of this? At Kaya's question, a short-sized guy raised his hand slowly. Peter Gray. He was Indian-American. Kaya was looking at him sharply. What do you want us to do? Do you think that you would be able to achieve something with this simple dish? If you are going to come out like this then back off from the main dish. Just, Kaya's voice started to get higher. Chloe that was next to her, was filled with worry and was about to stop her. Peter's low voice interrupted her. Aren't these things better compared to what you used to eat? What did you say? They say that you come from the ghetto. No, that you are from the ghetto. You didn't even properly go to middle school and dropped out. Don't you think that it's funny acting like an excellent Epicurean or a chef when you have lived that kind of life? 
The atmosphere got cold in an instant. Kaya looked at Peter expressionlessly. No, it seemed expressionless but the muscles in her face twitched so hard it seemed to explode any moment. Kaya's unique husky voice flowed out from her mouth. So, you are telling me not to touch your poor-like recipe. Poor-like recipe. I wonder. I don't know well what it means to be poor. But it seems that you do. Well, you are poor, so, this son of a b asterisk tch. Kaya stood up while cursing. Chloe that was next to her that didn't know what to do, got surprised and grabbed Kaya's waist. It was a good decision. Because if she was late by even a second, she would run and fix her fist in Peter's face. Looking at Kaya that was being held by Chloe, Peter kept speaking. Even if you are poor it seems that you don't want to hear such words. I'm sorry. I will apologize, that, hey, you are overdoing it. Do it appropriately. The teammates that couldn't keep watching, tried to stop Peter. Kaya's face seemed to be possessed by the devil and was pouring all kinds of curses you couldn't even understand. Peter was looking at that Kaya and was putting a relaxed face. It was at that moment. Fucking sheet. A low voice flowed naturally from all that commotion. At first, everybody followed that voice without thinking much, but soon, they doubted what they had heard and turned their heads. It was Zhou Minjun. He, who was usually calm and composed, cursed with his own mouth. Even Kaya, that was cursing at Peter, stopped and looked at Zhou Minjun. It was that much. Zhou Minjun didn't panic at receiving that sudden attention. But rather, looked at the two of them with his eyes twitching. What are you trying to do? No, what did you come here for? You came to cook. But why are you saying nonsense with that mouth you use to taste food? It's not that I'm saying nonce, he's saying that I'm poor and, it's true that Peter talked dirtily. But how clean did you talk? Why do you always talk in an attacking way? You clearly know that you are going to clash. Even after that scandal you made when you teamed up with Anderson, you still haven't got a hold of yourself. Kaya didn't know what to say and looked at Zhou Minjun with her eyes shaking. For her, Zhou Minjun's words were more shocking than Peter's. Since when did it become like that? That she thought that Zhou Minjun would obviously stand up for her. Peter, that was slightly looking at the situation, opened his mouth. Yeah. My words were harsh, but honestly if she didn't pick a fight with me, you too, don't point things out like that. You aren't a victim. What the hell is with you attacking herself just because you took a blow? How old are you? 23. 4. You are older than me. But what the hell are you doing to someone that isn't even in her 20s? Poor. Is that even something to say? His words weren't particularly mixed with curses, but his voice seemed to contain all kinds of curses and bad words. Peter seemed like he wanted to refute something, but there was particularly nothing he could say. Because Zhou Minjun's words were right. He also saw the sights of the other teammates. And Kaya too, couldn't find any words to say. It wasn't that she only did immature and stubborn things. She understood why Zhou Minjun got angry, and she, that had too many things to owe to him wasn't in a situation where she could refute something. But she couldn't do nothing about her sorrowful feelings. Perhaps, if Chloe wasn't hugging Kaya's shoulders tightly, she would probably have cried. Although, because Kaya was a hand bigger than Chloe, it seemed that it wasn't Kaya but Chloe that was being held. Zhou Minjun let out a deep sigh. And said in a lower tone of voice. Let's get your act together guys. You are old enough. You are not children. Do I, no, do we have to act to the point that we have to change your diapers? Those were some harsh words to listen to, but at least for Kaya and Peter, they couldn't say that it was harsh. Because they didn't have the right to. Zhou Minjun continued speaking. And even in my opinion, the recipe is lacking. Didn't you make the recipe sloppily because you don't have to focus on a single individual? 
I don't think that the combination of mustard and roasted turkey is bad. But it's a bit weak to present in a luxurious meal. Maybe Kaya's words were excessive, but she did point out the bad things. No reply came back. Under the awkward atmosphere, Zhou Minjun let out a sigh inwardly. Honestly, he didn't want to act like this. But he thought that if he let those two alone, the team would crumble. And the only one who could intervene was Zhou Minjun. Because if it was anyone else than him, Kaya wouldn't accept it obediently. Still, it was through the shining Zhou Minjun that he could control Kaya. Let's not make emotional problems between ourselves. We came here to cook. And tomorrow, we are going to welcome the customers. It's my first time as a chef that I'm treating a customer. I'm expecting it, I'm flustered by it. And I think that my heart is the same as yours. Isn't that right? So at least, we should prevent from presenting a dish that's filled with annoyance. Zhou Minjun talked up to that point and took a breath. Kaya and Peter seemed to calm down a little, and were sitting on their places while pouting. Zhou Minjun glanced at the camera that was installed in a corner. He thought that Martin would really like this scene. Whatever happens, that old man is the one who profits the most. Thinking about Martin laughing and grinning made him all the more detestable. Zhou Minjun let out a sigh and leaned on the sofa. Chloe glanced at her teammates and whispered to Zhou Minjun in a low voice. What are you going to do? I think I'm going to die from awkwardness. I, don't, know. Zhou Minjun spoke word by word in Chloe's ear. Chloe trembled as if it tickled her and stood up from that place. And yelled in a loud voice. First, let's eat dinner. But it's only 3.30. It's okay. We can make something that takes long to make, and can eat dinner a bit earlier. Chloe laughed and looked at them. Did someone die from an illness for eating dinner? The role of the head chef, for, end translator. Subak proofreader. Mailed. Chapter 43. The role of a head chef, 6, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 43. The role of a head chef, 6, her intentions to try to liven up the mood were too obvious. They didn't know if that liveliness was fake, or if it came from an honest heart. Zhou Minjun couldn't know. But one thing he knew was that his heart calmed down a little. Because if you say bitter words, people who listen to that would feel bad, but it's the same for the person that says it. So because he was Zhou Minjun, he couldn't feel good after saying those bad words. Chloe also tried to liven up that, and if not for her, only an awkward atmosphere would have remained. Whatever it was, Zhou Minjun felt grateful for Chloe. Because the burden he was feeling got relieved thanks to Chloe. At least, I don't have that kind of illness. Zhou Minjun grinned and got up. Me too. Hugo got up. And after that, all of the team members got up almost at the same time. It was the same for Peter and Kaya. They couldn't back off in this kind of situation. Zhou Minjun looked at Kaya and said. I think that it would be good to make the dishes we were planning to make tomorrow, what do you think? Chef. Kaya, that was listening to Zhou Minjun with a bad face, at the word of chef, she couldn't help but stiffen her face and looked at him. Hugo that was next to them received those words with an excessively funny face. Now that I look at it, even if it's provisional, a head chef is still a head chef. I will also call you chef from now on, chef. Me too, chef. Chef. That's good. It makes me feel like I'm in a real kitchen. It's okay, right chef? Joanne and Chloe laughed and looked at Kaya. Kaya was forcefully putting on a calm face, but her ears were reddening. Kaya opened her mouth. Just. Fix the recipe. Yes, chef. Hugo replied like how a soldier would salute. And after that, Kaya shut her mouth. The cooking proceeded in a more comfortable atmosphere. The team members each started to make what they were planning to do so, and Zhou Minjun also did the same. 
what he started to make was bisque de crabe. The bisque in Korea was a soup made by grating clam, crab or shrimp shell and was recognized greatly. However, only half of it was correct. Precisely speaking, bisque is a dish made by making a soup with crustacea and mollusk shell. But there was no need to grate it. The first thing Jo Minjun handled was the vegetables. Celery, carrots, onions, garlic, parsley, thyme, salt, olive oil and bay leaves. Jo Minjun sliced those vegetables and put them in boiling water. He was planning to make a vegetable broth. Actually, when you made bisque by the normal way, what was recommended was to use chicken broth or fish broth. However, if he wanted to do so right now he had to use a product, and Jo Minjun thought that it was better to use vegetable broth rather than doing that. In the first place, aside from it being a product, vegetable broth brought out the flavor more cleanly. He put the broth on fire and Jo Minjun started to handle the crab. The kind of the crab was Dungeness crab, and it was normally eaten in the western coasts of America. And the size of it was as big as the ones that lived in the United States. Even roughly felt, it was almost one kilogram. But it was more comfortable the bigger it was, anyways. Jo Minjun immediately dislocated the joints of the crab, and carefully peeled off the shell. It was a job that was easily done for people that touched crab every day. To hull the uncooked meat. However, Jo Minjun wasn't accustomed to doing it, so he could only be cautious. Because if he put in even a little bit more of strength, the meat would crumble. Perhaps the reason the cooking score is 7 is also because this job is difficult to do. Jo Minjun thought like that and smirked. The crab bisque he was making right now was made by placing the meat of the crab in a plate and pouring hot bisque in it. Minjun, is it going well? It's half done. Wow, already. Chloe asked in a surprised expression. Jo Minjun slightly looked back at her. Chloe said she was going to make grilled sea bass, but she was still handling the fish. Jo Minjun opened his mouth. Want me to help you? No, I'm almost done. If you need, just ask. Because I'm going to finish in a little while. Yeah. Soon, the vegetable gravy was also done. It was time to slowly make the bisque. Jo Minjun lowered the fire to middle and he put in butter and canola oil in the pan. And when the butter was moderately melted, he put in the chopped shallots. Shallots, that was a variety of onions, had a thinner texture and the flavor was also lighter. When you needed the flavor of onion but it was somewhat excessive at the same time, it was a good choice to put in onions. After he slightly sautéed the shallots, he put in the gravy and cream and seasoned it with salt and white pepper. And then, it was the time for the crab. Precisely speaking, it was putting in the shell and the guts of the crab. Then, he boiled it for five minutes and after he poured dry white wine, he boiled it again. After that, he had to use the sieve for the bisque. Because there couldn't be rests of gut and shell on the soup. And the sieve was obviously better if it was thick. He poured the soup on the plate that contained the crab meat, and then, placing some thinly chopped fresh tarragon on top of it was the end. Tarragon was a herb that was sweet and the spicy flavor was so exquisite to the point that it was called as the queen of spices by the French. He believed that the tarragon was going to save the simple flavor of the crab bisque. Jo Minjun slowly drank a spoon of the bisque soup. At first, he didn't feel much inspiration. The sweet and salty flavor stimulated his tongue first, and when the soup was flowing through his throat, he felt the unique and clean flavor and aroma fill his mouth. When he got a hold of himself, he was smiling really happily. A flavor you couldn't smile with. This time, Jo Minjun ate the crab meat. The soft and tender meat crumbled easily just like soft tofu. It was to the point that he could chew it with his tongue and the ceiling of his mouth. And he couldn't feel a fishy smell at all. Is it tasty? Hugo, that was cooking the asabuco slightly glanced towards him. Jo Minjun just replied back with a smile. And that became enough of a reply. Hugo was stirring the pure and opened his mouth with earnest eyes. 
Give me one bite. I don't want to. After you eat a bite, you won't get that much inspiration later when we eat. Because there's not a stronger moment than the first bite. No, I will evaluate it with what I eat right now, so give me a bite. I can't. The smell of the pure is still going to be left in your nose and mouth, so I feel really sorry for my bisque for you to eat it. Ah, you are dirtily tenacious. Hugo grumbled and looked away. Zhou Minjun smirked and looked at the surroundings. Everybody was busy, but all of them were almost finishing. Hugo, Chloe and Peter that were in charge of the main were preparing the sauce without touching the meat. No, precisely speaking, it wasn't the case for Peter. Because his turkey was already being cooked in the oven. Did he change the recipe? Because of the disastrous recipe of applying mustard, that scandal happened. If Peter knew how to think, then he would cook using another method. Zhou Minjun looked away again. And his eyes fell on Kaya. She was observing them while being seated on a chair with a bored expression. She could only be like that. Because, although they were preparing dinner, they were also preparing for the mission. Also, Kaya was the head chef. There wasn't a frying pan for her. The bread is done. Carlos, that was in charge of the baking, said. Unlike his Brazilian-like name, his face was whiter than white people, and his eyes were so blue it was uncomfortable to look at. However, the bagel that was baked in the oven had a dark brown color that reminded you of Brazilian people. Kaya stood up from her seat as if the boring time had ended at last. Good, everyone gather. Let's start eating. Everybody stopped their hands and sat on their seats. The bagel Carlos served them was quite well cooked, but honestly speaking, it didn't suit well with Zhou Minjun's tastes. In the first place, Zhou Minjun didn't like bagels. And he also didn't like the kinds of cream cheese. After Zhou Minjun applied banana cream cheese to half of the half of the bagel, he stood up. It was his turn next. The crab bisque had the role of being an appetizer. Zhou Minjun placed the dishes that contained raw crab meat and poured the bisque soup using a kettle. Honestly speaking, he needed other kind of ideas than when he cooked for the judges. Because he was going to be evaluated with the same competitors. Showing your report card to your teacher and to your friends could only be different stories. But of course, if he followed the system, it was a score he didn't need to worry about much. Crab bisque soup, freshness. 81% origins. Too many ingredients to show, quality. Medium high, average ingredients, cooking score. 7 out of 10 it was unfortunate that the quality was middle high, but he could do nothing about that. Because the crab, that was the main for this dish, wasn't fresh but frozen. So he could only be dissatisfied while looking at the cooking score. Zhou Minjun asked with a nervous expression. Is it delicious? It's excellent. Although it's the first time I eat raw crab meat, I didn't think that it would be this tasty. It doesn't feel fishy at all. Raw meat and bisque. It's a funny combination. Everybody said good comments. It wasn't that they were talking formally. You wouldn't know about other things, but they weren't people to talk formally for cooking. Zhou Minjun laughed as if he was a little relieved. Looking at Zhou Minjun acting like this, Hugo smirked. It was a handsome but greasy smile typical of Spanish men. Even if you have an absolute sense of taste, you do get nervous when others try your food. Of course. Because my tastes doesn't become the standard for flavor. Well, don't worry. It's a flavor that anyone will like if they don't have an allergy or fear to crabs. It would be fortunate if that was the case. Zhou Minjun smiled and then he looked at Kaya and Peter. Only them didn't evaluate his dish. Peter opened his voice with an awkward face. It's delicious. Me too. Kaya followed with a low voice after Peter. And then, Peter slightly glanced at Kaya. However, Kaya rolled her eyes and ignored Peter. Zhou Minjun that saw that, sighed inwardly. 
Although it would be a strange thing for them to act friendly right after they fought, but even so, he felt regret for Kaya's attitude. Whatever the situation was, she was still the head chef. But he rather felt that he was taking on the role of being head chef. And it was a situation he didn't like much. If he had picked the head chef's ball, so if he was head chef right now he would feel more comfortable. Because it was giving him the qualifications to do so. However, she was still his teammate. Acting like her protector or taking her role was a funny thing. Zhou Minjun shut his mouth and turned his head. Soon, Chloe was coming with a cart that contained a well-grilled sea base, like a garrotin. The white sauce he saw at first glance, seemed to be a sauce made by mixing white Russian and velouté sauce. After he ate it, he could summarize his feelings with a few words. Delicious. Really delicious. Taking into account that grilling fish was a difficult thing, looking that the exterior was crispy but the interior was moist, the steak feeling it gave you could only be explained with the word pro. The combination of the velouté sauce was also perfect. At first glance, it seemed to be carbonara sauce, but the non-greasy sauce brought up the aroma of the sea base to a new level. The juice that came out when he chewed the sea base and the velouté sauce seemed to be only one. Zhou Minjun opened his mouth while admiring. It's, it's really delicious, Chloe. Chloe smiled brightly. But contrary to what he was expecting, what came out from her mouth was a question. Really? What's the score? Zhou Minjun replied while smiling. Until when were they planning to ask him the score? Eight points. He, so this much is eight points. Chloe looked at her dish absentmindedly. And the team members also ate the sea base with a little different expression. They also knew that it was delicious before, but when Zhou Minjun said that it was an eight points dish, the flavor was felt more luxurious and refined. But the sweet atmosphere crumbled after that. It was Peter. It wasn't that he did something. Only that his turkey dish was the problem. The roasted turkey that was filled with herbs and vegetables wasn't that bad but it was certainly not a dish that you could say it was good. Precisely speaking, it was a dish to eat at home. He made and applied brown sauce in it, and accompanied it with some green onions, but there was also a problem inside of that. They could sense a little burnt flavor in the brown sauce. It wasn't a dish to present to the customers. The thing that caused him the most headache was the fact that even after presenting that kind of dish, he had asked for the score of his dish and also with an expectant face. However, he couldn't tell him a good score just because of that. Because he didn't lie when it came to cooking. 5 points. And the top score is 10. Yeah. Leave it. Eat among yourselves. I will go upstairs first. Peter left the kitchen with a face filled with annoyance and disappointment, and unhappiness. In the low atmosphere, Zhou Minjun opened his mouth as if he had remembered of something. He left without washing the dishes. The role of the head chef, five, end translator. Subak proofreader. Mailed. Chapter 44. Unexpected Fame, 1, You Are Listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 44. Unexpected Fame, 1, while Kaya's team was in the middle of that, Martin was treating an unexpected customer. Emily Potter. It was her. Of course, it wouldn't be too weird to see them together. Because in the first place, they were director and performer. But right now, Emily didn't seek Martin as a performer. Emily smiled brightly. It's been a while, since we met in a place without cameras, Martin. Yes. But what happened? Are you going to agree to that proposal I made? Martin looked at her expectantly but Emily shook her head. Martin didn't get disappointed and asked. Then why? Well, as you and I are both busy people I will go straight to the point. About that proposal, I'm thinking about it. About the tasting program that follows after Grand Chef. Saying that you are thinking about it means that you have some kind of proposal. You are right. You really are tactful. 
I want Zhou Minjun. At those words, Martin's face got strange. Only then did Emily think that saying that she wanted Zhou Minjun could be interpreted in many ways. However, there was no need to correct it. Because Martin wasn't the kind of person to not know the meaning of it. He opened his mouth. Is it because of his talent in tasting? Yes. If the performers of the program aren't set yet, you can at least put me and Zhou Minjun. But what is Zhou Minjun thinking? That's not a problem I should be worrying about. Isn't the director in charge of recruiting? Emily's words were right. Martin fell in his thoughts. Aside from Zhou Minjun's opinion, he could only think if the combination was the ideal one. Originally, the program Martin thought of was about sending Epicureans with good reputation on a tasting travel. However, will Zhou Minjun fit in that kind of place? Of course, it was true that Zhou Minjun's sense of taste was well developed. Wasn't the sensitiveness of his tongue not comparable to any of the Epicureans? But although Zhou Minjun was a pearl, he was in a non polished state. He still felt unrest letting him star as an Epicurean. And Emily saw Martin's uneasiness. Of course, it would be a bit different to what you had in plan. But I promise you. Although the direction changes a little, the fun wouldn't. I agree with that. Because aside from Zhou Minjun's talent, he can plentifully become a star. Then I will be waiting for a good response. Call me when you have decided. Phew, the work has increased. Increased. Did you have other work to do? At Emily's question, Martin let out a sigh bitterly. He replied with an exhausted voice. There surged a little problem in Kaya's team. Precisely speaking, it would be better to say that discord formed. Well, I was also uneasy. Kaya is a good chef, but she's not the type to guide a person. Who did she clash with? Peter Gray. It was him. Ah, Emily nodded as if she had understood. Peter's skill was fairly good, but his character was really back. But his skills were only good if you talked about the early stages of the qualifying rounds. The participants that survived didn't have bad skills, and compared to them, he had quite a lot of lacking points. And even Peter himself would be feeling that. Even so, saying that a fierce character got fiercer wasn't a weird thing to say. Emily opened her mouth. However, isn't it unrelevant? In your case, it would be better if that kind of trouble surges up because you can use it for broadcasting material. Shouldn't you rather be more happy? Of course, I should be if it was only broadcasted. But in the end, this broadcast flows through the participants. If by chance, a bad atmosphere spreads, their attitudes and emotions will also be transmitted through the screen. If you take into account the long term, it isn't good. In the end it's that. That you have to take care of the participants' mental health to a point. Right. You are right. Martin nodded. It was at that moment. Emily fell in her thoughts for a moment and clapped her hands and opened her mouth. Now that I think about it, the fourth episode is broadcasted today, right? What is it about? Depending on the contents, the moods of the participants would also differ like heaven and earth. Martin replied with an awkward smile. After finishing dinner, Zhou Minjun and the teammates all gathered in the resting room. Peter, that was feeling bad and went back to his room, came out as if he was also curious about the broadcast. It was also an obvious thing for the other team to come out. Zhou Minjun poked Marco's side and asked. What did you get in charge of? It's a secret. They told me not to say it. EY, you can at least tell me that. Even so, it's really obvious. It's dessert right? Marco didn't reply and rolled his eyes. It was at that moment. Anderson grabbed Marco's arm and stood up from the place. Anderson was looking at Zhou Minjun coldly. What are you doing acting like a spy, I'm a spy? Of course, how else can you express stealing information? Honestly, doesn't it not matter? You don't know about that.
so what are you in charge of? I'm, Zhou Minjun was about to reply when he frowned. You don't want to tell me but you want me to tell you. I want to say those words back at you. Leave it. I'm not curious. Zhou Minjun snorted and turned his head. Anderson looked at Zhou Minjun acting like that, and after he laughed coldly he dragged Marco and said. Don't play with the other team. Especially with that guy. He's a guy that has his insides black. Ah, uh, no. Sorry Minjun. I will leave. Zhou Minjun looked at Anderson and Marco getting farther and put on a perplexed face. Anderson was Anderson, but looking at Marco, he couldn't help but feel a sense of betrayal. Could this feeling be described like when you were in school? When your friend you used to believe was your best friend goes and play with another guy when the class separates in half. You got dumped. Chloe sat next to him and asked teasingly. Zhou Minjun let out a laugh and replied. What are you talking about? Zhou Minjun looked back at Chloe. She was rather well dressed up. She was wearing a lined bandana on her head, and a red and white flowered one piece. Actually, it was a fashion he didn't know how to evaluate. It seemed like an Alps girl from the 80s and a Korean girl were standing in a boundary line. Zhou Minjun said awkwardly. Those clothes are pretty. Really. Actually, I really like them. Maybe, if he had said that it was weird, she would have gotten depressed. Zhou Minjun let out a sigh of relief and changed the subject. And Peter. He seemed to have calmed down a lot. Compared to before, he became milder. What a relief. You made so he didn't approach Kaya, right? In the first place, even if I tried to make them see each other, they wouldn't even get close. Well, he also doesn't want to get close to you. Zhou Minjun shrugged his shoulders. Saying the truth, it seemed like Peter was more disappointed than Kaya. Because he had bad-mouthed them, and also evaluated his dish as a five. He could think that he was hated. Chloe let out a sigh. You said what you needed to. You did well. But I didn't say that I regretted it. You seemed bothered. How could I get to that point? It would be good if you are weren't, Chloe talked like that and put on a light smile. It was a smile you couldn't hate. Zhou Minjun shut his mouth and turned his head. The broadcast was starting. The fourth episode was about the qualifying rounds, like it was announced previously. It started in Grand Chef's house along the participants' faces and admiration noises. Among those, there were unfamiliar faces and also ones that were not present in this place. After the participants, a scene which the judges presented Grand Chef passed, and after that was the catfish. The perplexed faces of the participants were shown in front of the wiggling catfish but among those, Zhou Minjun's comparatively calm face flashed through the screen. Chloe exclaimed and poked Zhou Minjun's shoulder. Did you see? Did you see? You appeared just then. I did. Zhou Minjun replied with a calm voice and kept watching at the screen. And he could feel how competitive was that mission. There were many participants that were kicked out for not being able to trim the fish well. It was a situation where they had to shorten a hundred people to a few tens. The level of the evaluation was quite harsh, so he felt quite proud to have passed that mission. While he was thinking about those things, the screen showed Zhou Minjun. It wasn't that he flashed by just like before, but a scene where he was cooking properly was shown. The way he was frying the catfish skin, and how he was making pure sauce. And aside from him, participants like Kaya, Anderson, Chloe, or Hugo were also shown. Zhou Minjun let out a sigh and said. I will be mentioned in the internet, right? You don't want that. I don't, but I'm also expecting to it. If only good words were posted, why would I not like it? However, the ill comments that were casually posted were quite hurting. If we are like that, then how hard should it be for Kaya? Phew, I would feel more comfortable if internet didn't exist. At Chloe's words, Zhou Minjun looked at Kaya. 
she was almost glaring at the TV from a separated seat with her usual cold face. Was she nervous? Zhou Minjun whispered to Chloe. Go next to Kaya. I think that if I go now, she will start to grumble. Okay. Chloe got up and sat next to Kaya. Fortunately, Kaya didn't get annoyed at her. Rather, a smile was formed in an instant, so it seemed that in heart, she wanted her to come. The broadcast was soon ending. Good comments and bad ones from the participants were said, and after the logo of Grand Chef showed up, the screen turned black. It was at that moment when the participants started to stand up thinking that it had ended. The screen brightened up a little and it showed Zhou Minjun's image. And at that moment, Zhou Minjun let out a sigh. Because the ones that were on the screen were Kaya and himself. It seemed like they just inserted the sounds of their microphones, but in the TV only the sound of tableware clashing and the conversation from Kaya and Zhou Minjun was heard. It's delicious. Yours too. Making their lingering voices as the ending, the broadcast finally ended. Zhou Minjun couldn't help but get bewildered. Just what was that scene for them to edit it and to show it like a cut scene that came after a movie? Hugo that was seated in front of them turned his head. He grinned and said. It's delicious. Yours too. At Hugo's words, another voice was heard immediately. This voice was so close that he could even feel the heat coming from the mouth in his neck. As he looked back surprisedly, he saw Carlos looking at him treacherously. Zhou Minjun frowned and said. It's edited. Carlos. Do you hear something? What? A lie. A conscience-ripping sound. You have to also get through that to get a hold of yourselves. Zhou Minjun replied hopelessly. It was at that moment when Carlos and Hugo were grinning and teasing Zhou Minjun. Joanne came running as if she was surprised at something. And she was even wearing high heels. Lou, look at this. You rose in the search engines. Who? Zhou Minjun asked thinking, maybe. Joanne showed her handphone as if he was asking something obvious. Zhou Minjun's face froze. The name, no, the names that rose in the portal's search engine were quite familiar. Three new, Zhou Min Jun and Kaya Lotus Unexpected Fame, 1, End Translator. Subak Proofreader. Mailed. Chapter 45. Unexpected Fame, 2, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 45. Unexpected Fame, 2, This person was wiping the window which moonlight passed through. There was a man seated on a sofa in the dark resting room. And that was Zhou Minjun. The TV that was turned on in front of him was broadcasting a famous talk show from a famous comedian. But his eyes weren't looking at the TV. The screen of the handphone he had in his hand was too enchanting to turn his attention to the TV. Carl Casper. Why don't you change Grand Chef's name to Dating Chef? It made me confused as to what program I was watching. Anna Thompson. I agree. Whether they are a couple that suit each other or not, I wish for the program I am watching right now to become a cooking program again. Olivia Wesseyes At Anna Thompson just because they insert a scene where they are playing cutely doesn't mean that it stops being a cooking program. For me, it was a good sight. Dawnbreaker I want to eat catfish. Why do I keep imagining the flavor of something I have never tried? Meridia I agree. I think that it would be perfect to eat for breakfast. Harry Miller. Who do you think will win? For me. Kuroki Yui. Why did you stop talking? For me, it's Anderson. He does seem skilled, and his cold appearance is also cool, he's my type. Boodis. Chloe for me. She's cute and at the same time pretty. I want her to win. I don't know why but I keep cheering for her. Jessica Wood At Kuroki Yui rather than Anderson, Hugo or Carlos are more handsome. And they are more manlike. Oh right, that Asian was also fine. 
the one who was eating with Kaya at the end. What was his name? Kuroki Yui. At Jessica Wood it's Minjun. Looking at him I started to think that he is a chef that resembles his cooking. I think that rather than being luxurious, his dishes were more sleek. April. At Kuroki Yui Sleek. Him. The catfish meatballs seemed like sheet. The one who is sleek is Chef Allen. Sansa Stark. Am I the only one who thinks that Marco is cute? NN. The world is wide and personal tastes vary. Ariana Sommer. Minjun and Kaya really suited each other. I got the feeling I got back to high school. Katie Jones. Tell them to differentiate the places. What the hell are they doing instead of cooking? Eugene Smith, at Katie Jones No, actually we are driving them to that point. Was there something else they did rather than eating? If you want to say something do it to the director. And you were telling Kaya to not look at it. A voice was heard. Joe Minjun glanced back. Chloe was putting a big sister-like face looking at her spoiled little brother. Joe Minjun didn't really reply back and turned off his handphone. His eyes that didn't know where to look, directed to the show program he wasn't even interested in. Joe Minjun opened his mouth. What are you doing at this hour? That's something I should be saying. Why aren't you sleeping and staying here like this? I wonder, Joe Minjun said and then fell in his thoughts. And that was about Chloe's voice. Her voice was quite coarse and low unlike her pretty and cute appearance. It was a little different to having a husky voice. That was more suited to Kaya's voice. If Kaya's voice was one that suffered from a sore throat then, Chloe's voice was more from someone catching a cold. What am I thinking about? Joe Minjun shook his head. Chloe asked. You just thought of something weird. How did you know? Because when people get speechless, they usually think of weird things. Chloe talked like that and stood up. She opened her mouth cautiously. It's really amazing how people make up things. Just because they share food it is romance. Actually, it's nothing like that. Well, it's a broadcast. At his words, Chloe smiled slightly. She opened her mouth. Now that I see, you said that you were going to tell your parents when you passed the mission, but it got postponed to tomorrow. Are you sad? I don't know. I wasn't even thinking about that. Thank you for worrying. Rather than being worried, it just seems like looking at myself. Why? Your mother isn't opposed to you cooking. Joe Minjun didn't say the word parents tactlessly. Although children from a separated family weren't sad, they got hurt at a simple word. Chloe seemed to notice Joe Minjun's consideration and put on a soft and at the same time, sad smile. It's not about opposition. It's not that my relation with my parents is bad, but they can't express themselves properly. And I know how hard and painful it can be. Joe Minjun just touched his fingers without saying a thing. Hard and painful. It was something he had never thought of but listening to her and reflecting on it, it did seem like that was the case. Having your parents as an opponent and keeping it a secret was a heavy and tough thing to do. But Chloe, why did you come here? There are only good comments related about you, and it doesn't seem like you are here because of the comments. What, I'm not a person. I got fluttered by the comments and couldn't sleep. So I came here after exercising for a bit. There would probably be a lot of people like us. If you visit their rooms right now, nobody would be sleeping. That's probably right. But what about Kaya? Well, she would be looking at the screen again. I think that Marco glanced at it and fell asleep, and guys like Hugo would probably be fighting in the comments. Anderson would probably not check it because of his pride. I think that those types of guys would check it from start to end. After talking like this for a while, his heart that was beating anxiously got relaxed. However, after worrying in one thing, he started to worry about another. Joe Minjun exhaled air and said. Could Peter get calm? 
he modified the recipe previously. To tandoori chicken breast and not turkey. Well, we will know about the detailed things after it with checking him, but he will get better. Saying that his dish was five points, do you think that it was my mistake? Even for me, it wouldn't be strange for that dish to get a five. If it was another person, they would forcefully evaluate it in a good way. But we are chefs. No, saying that we are chefs would be wrong. But even so, we have an objective to become one. So I think that you were right to be honest in his cooking. Maybe, if he can't beat that honest opinion, Chloe paused for a moment and smiled faintly. Even Zhou Minjun could know the meaning of that smile. The words Chloe couldn't bear to say, were said by Zhou Minjun. Right. He will not be qualified to be a chef. Probably, it will be the first day for many of you to welcome a customer. Alan said. The kitchen's atmosphere was different than usual. Originally the countertops were lined in two lines but right now, they were in the shape of a square and split in two. It was clearly meant for the team mission. And the participants were already separated in each team's places. I won't talk for long. I want to stimulate you with the word, first customer. Make a good cooking and present a good dish. It's the end. Now, go and prepare. 8.45 AM. They couldn't properly have breakfast and the mission already started. It couldn't be helped. Because the customers were going to come at 12 for lunch. To prepare properly, two hours weren't even that long. Are you all ready? At Kaya's rough voice, everyone nodded. Kaya was putting on a face of a female evil warrior that came out from a movie, and said. I will organize the recipes one last time and leave. Carlos will make the bagel with banana cream cheese, and after that Joe Minjun will make crab bisque soup. The main will be Chloe's roasted base. And, Kaya paused after that. Her eyes were directed at Peter. But Peter didn't look back at her and was only staring at the floor. Kaya's eyes twitched for a moment, but she didn't express it and continued talking. Peter will make tandoori chicken breast. And Hugo the asabuco, the asabuco was delicious. Hugo. Just make it like before. Yes sir. Hugo smiled and saluted. Zhou Minjun nodded unconsciously. The asabuco made by Hugo was certainly delicious. An Italian dish you made by boiling down calf marrow in white wine and steaming it, the flavor was certainly deep, just like the home flavor of Italy. The cooking score was 7. But the flavor was way above that. Joanne will make Capri's salad, Tony the Chaco Machi and Ivana the orange sherbet. Joanne, Ivana. Don't forget to make it fast and serve it after that. Minjun, you know that you have to help too in serving, right? Yes. Good. We are done. Let's start. As Kaya shouted, everyone started to bring their ingredients. And Zhou Minjun was the same. The ingredients didn't change to the time he was serving his teammates last night. When he was peeling and taking of the shell of the crab, Kaya got close and watched what Zhou Minjun was doing. Zhou Minjun asked in a low voice as if he was whispering. Dot and Peter. Do you think he's doing well? I wonder. I think that I would ruin it if I went there. Even so, you have to go. Perhaps he would be waiting for reconciliation. Okay. Kaya put on a face that didn't really like the idea and walked towards Peter. It wasn't a good atmosphere, but even so, it was good for them to converse. Zhou Minjun continued to focus on his dish. This time, there were pros and cons while boiling bisque soup in a huge quantity. The advantage was that the flavor deepened. Just like every soup, the more you boiled bisque soup, the deeper the flavor would become. The disadvantage was that the amount was too much to handle. Even if the soup burnt below the pot, with this much amount, it was difficult to even feel the aroma, so it was also difficult to check the state of it. A chef that was smelling the bisque soup for minutes, no, for hours would find it difficult to detect that it was getting burnt. 
because his nose became dull. Of course, Zhou Minjun could check the cooking score of the finished dish through the system. But if he checked after the dish was done, it became too late. He couldn't permit any mistakes, and for that he couldn't let his arms rest and stop stirring the soup. And the quality of the bisque soup that was made carefully didn't fall behind to yesterday's soup. Zhou Minjun looked at the soup with a satisfied expression. Now, he only had to maintain the temperature and serve it to the customers. Of course, making a huge amount at a time wasn't something good to do, but it was unavoidable for a restaurant. They just couldn't adjust the timing to keep making any kinds of soup and serving it to the customers. The customers have arrived. What are you doing and not serving? Alan yelled in a haggard voice. Carlos held the bagel and banana cream cheese he had made and moved. And after that, it was the turn of Joe Minjun. It was at that moment when he was putting the dish that contained crab meat and a kettle filled with bisque soup and proceeding towards the dining room. Some of the customers that were having their meal looked at Zhou Minjun and nodded as if they knew who he was. And some, even pointed at him. He felt a bit embarrassed. In his mouth, a smile he didn't know the reason of, started to show. He wanted to be as expressionless as he could, but he just couldn't hold it. In the end, Zhou Minjun laughed awkwardly and kept walking. In the first table, there were two people that seemed like a couple. Zhou Minjun placed the dish that contained the crab meat and poured the bisque soup. It's crab bisque soup. I recommend you to first savor the soup and then the crab meat. Did you make this? Yes. I made this dish. Oh, this feeling is quite strange. Just yesterday I gulped and drooled while looking at the catfish meatball stew you made. But this seems even more delicious. Right, Clark. Hmm. It's my first time eating crab. The man that was named Clark, looked at the soup that was placed in front of him with an unfamiliar face. Zhou Minjun laughed softly and opened his mouth. It won't feel fishy at all. First, I will try the soup. Clark hesitated a moment and extended his spoon. Zhou Minjun looked nervously at his spoon. It went in his mouth. Clark closed his eyes as if he was savoring it, and soon, opened it widely and moved his spoon again. Twice, three times. And on that spoon, the crab meat he said he was unfamiliar with was placed on top. The man that chewed the crab meat widened his eyes and said. Wow, this, my God. The crab meat melts even before I chew it. Just why? It's delicious. It really is. I also think like Clark. It is delicious. Thanks for the good food. Zhou Minjun didn't reply and just smiled. It was a smile that didn't even have a trace of being fake, but filled with happiness. He felt fluttered. The words from the judges were completely different than the customers saying that it was delicious. It was at that moment. The woman grinned and asked. Did you also seduce Kaya like this? With your dish. Zhou Minjun laughed helplessly and replied. She did say that it was delicious. Unexpected fame, too, and translator. Subak proofreader. Mailed. Chapter 46. Unexpected fame, 3, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 46. Unexpected fame, 3, there were two reasons he didn't serve the crab meat with bisque soup together. The first reason was because if the crab meat got overcooked, the softness would disappear. So it was best to serve the soup the latest he could. The second reason was simple. Service. The more luxurious a restaurant got, the price got more expensive. And what was included in the price wasn't simply the food. There were many places where the head chef would personally come to explain the food on two or three star Michelin restaurants. And the one who was pouring the bisque soup wasn't only Zhou Minjun. Kaya too was helping him serve. For the customers, it was a good thing. Because Kaya was one of the most popular participants of Grand Chef. Especially, it was more fun to see if she was together with Zhou Minjun, 
who had made a scandal with her. There were even customers who asked them to stand together for a minute. But the director didn't particularly stop them. They weren't asking something excessive, and they were funnily giving him broadcasting material, so he had no need to do so. Of course, the result of that was the exhaustion for both of them. Kaya took a short breath and looked at the tables. While she was serving the bisque soup, the customers showed so much interest to the point she felt burdened. To smile at them wasn't a difficult task. Because when she worked in the market, there were several occasions where she had to put on a fake smile. However, it was also true that it exhausted you mentally. And right at this moment, Kaya was more exhausted than ever. The last customer for lunch. Joe Minjun and Kaya were standing nervously. They could only do so. On that table was seated a familiar face. Emily, and also Joseph. But the one they had to be aware of was Emily. Because she was in charge of evaluating the blue team, Kaya's team, and Joseph was in charge of Jacob's team. What Joseph had to evaluate was the dinner, and Alan had to look and evaluate at the participants that were in the kitchen and not the tables. Can you explain to me what kind of dish this is? At her words, Kaya glanced at Joe Minjun. He opened his mouth and said calmly. I'm going to pour bisque soup in a not cooked crab meat. Yes, just like this. The aroma of the bisque soup will seep inside the meat but inside of it, the delicious and sweet flavor only crabs have will be felt. I will recommend you concentrating on that point. And first, drink the soup. Emily followed Joe Minjun's words and drank a spoonful of soup, and then, ate it along with crab meat. In her mouth, a faint smile appeared. It seemed like she wasn't completely satisfied, but at least, it was not a dissatisfied face. It's good. Ah, the proper evaluation will be done after the mission. Go and keep working. Yes. They replied like that but actually, there was nothing left to do. At least, it was like this right now. There weren't even people who had finished their soups to withdraw their plates. Joe Minjun whispered to Kaya that was standing next to him. Go to the kitchen. Chloe's sea base should start coming out. Ah, uh, okay. I understand. Kaya massaged her own neck and went in the kitchen. Chloe had already finished roasting the sea bases. Kaya opened her mouth. Is it done? Wait a minute, I'm doing the plating. Chloe carefully placed the sea base on top of the velouté sauce. The side that got in contact with the sauce was the meat part that wasn't covered by the skin. If the skin got wet with the sauce, then there was no point to roast it crisply. She placed time that was the size of a nail, and the plating was done. Kaya opened her mouth while watching her work. I will help you. You don't mind right? Of course. Kaya opened her mouth while assisting her. The reaction for Minjun was good. Now's your turn. Mm, I'm suddenly feeling burdened. I said it because of that. Kaya talked like that and grinned. Although it seemed ill-natured, it was her way to express herself. Chloe wasn't so small-minded as to refute that to a girl that wasn't even in her twenties and didn't know how to express herself. There were a total of twenty roasted breams placed in two carts. When Chloe and Kaya were pulling the cart and getting to the dining room, Jo Minjun got in the kitchen. And he was also pulling the cart that contained the empty dishes. There were no dishes that had bisque soup left. Chloe slightly laughed. You are the best. Jo Minjun laughed but didn't reply. There was nothing happier for a chef for the customers to eat and not leave a thing on the dish. As Chloe praised Jo Minjun, she felt her heart beating more wildly. The cooking was well done. At least, it was for her. However, if the customers said that it wasn't delicious, Chloe wasn't confident on being able to overcome that situation. It will be delicious. Kaya opened her mouth. Chloe looked at her because she felt like she had been seen through. Kaya evaded Chloe's eyes and continued to say. You cook well. The sea base I ate yesterday was good, 
and it's not the point to come all the way here and become a mistake. This plate right now, I'll bet one dollar that they will eat everything including the sauce. But one dollar is not much. Shut up. Kaya snorted and turned her head. Chloe laughed and opened her mouth. Thank you. But a reply didn't come back. Maybe she wasn't accustomed to getting compliments. Or was she sulking because she said that the dollar wasn't much? She was curious, but she could only keep it for after she was done. Soon, the cart was getting in the dining room. Wow, Chloe. This time I get to see your cooking. The dishes I saw in the broadcast all seemed delicious. Thank you. I hope that this dish won't disappoint you. Can I take a picture with you later? Yes. First, take a picture of this dish. I think that you will want to do that more than taking a picture with me. Chloe smiled brightly and replied. And it was not only for that customer. Every time she placed the plate in the table, Chloe made eye contact with every customer and smiled brightly. Normally, it could be easy to look at that as a job smile. But Chloe was different. The people that saw that smile all felt their heads brighten. It was that bright and vivid. It was so much that it made someone who thought that the smile was made up to feel guilty. She had a different character to Kaya or Jo Min Jun, a really clear and fresh feeling was felt from her. Chloe's smile made the customers to be able to eat their dish in a more happy and comfortable way. Because even until now, they were shocked at the amounts of cameras so they couldn't enjoy the meal comfortably. But now, they were a lot more relaxed. And that was also seen with another meaning. Precisely speaking, it was seen in Jo Min Jun's eyes. Chloe's friendly and gentle attitude makes the customers feel more comfortable. The roasted sea base with velouté sauce brings the utmost of its flavor. Saying the truth, he didn't even need to see that window. It was obvious. If the chef treats you with that kind of face, with that kind of smile you could only enjoy your meal, except if it was not delicious. Jo Min Jun mumbled in a low voice. Did I learn something new? Learn what? At the unexpected voice, Jo Min Jun got surprised and looked at his side. He didn't know when he came but Anderson was checking at the customers with his arms crossed. Jo Min Jun calmed his surprised heart and replied. I mean Chloe. To the customers. How do I have to say this? Treat well. Act gently. Something's lacking. Right. To smile and serve them honestly. With just that, the atmosphere which the customers have their meal changes completely. That's obvious. Even though it was obvious, I can't do it well. To make a smile so bright as to the person that's watching you feels good. At those words Anderson snorted. He opened his mouth and said coldly. If there are people like Chloe, then people like you and me should exist. Take into account that all of the chefs smile like that. Rather, they would prefer meaner chefs. That's right, but why are you here? Aren't you in charge of the main? Because I have time to spare. I only finished the preparations. Don't ask beyond that. I'm not getting deceived by a spy. You really like calling me a spy. Anderson didn't reply. It was at that moment. Kaya was coming towards them with her cart with empty plates. Precisely speaking, she was walking towards the kitchen that was behind them. When they looked at her unconsciously, Kaya frowned and looked at Anderson. Don't put on that trashy posture. You are blocking the door. Only then did Anderson realize that he was blocking the door. Anderson blushed his ears and got out of the way. Kaya got past Anderson and said to Jo Min Jun. If you don't have anything to do then follow me. Why, do you have something to make me do? If you don't, I'll make something. Come. And don't play with the red teams be asterisk tch. Be asterisk tch. Did you say that to me? Shut up. If you feel bad become the head chef. Kaya didn't even look at him and went past him. 
Zhou Minjun's mouth was half open as if he found it absurd and followed Kaya's back. And then asked. If Anderson is the red team's B asterisk TCH, then am I the blue team's B asterisk TCH? Why, you don't like being my B asterisk TCH? Is there someone that likes being one? Then I will make you the captain B asterisk TCH. What if I still don't like it? This crazy. Zhou Minjun thought that those last words were directed at Kaya herself. However Kaya's eyes weren't directed at Zhou Minjun, but was fixed in front. Zhou Minjun slowly followed that gaze. And he too, stiffened his face. Tandoori chicken breast, freshness. 87% origins. Too many ingredients to show, quality. High, average ingredients, cooking score. 3 out of 10 he believed in him. That even if he did make a mistake, his cooking level was basically level 6. He believed that he wouldn't make the same mistakes twice. But it was a disaster. Zhou Minjun looked dumbfoundedly at the tandoori chicken breasts that were in front of him. It was chicken breast applied with India's traditional masala sauce, that was tandoori chicken breast. However the thing that was in front of him couldn't even be called tandoori. How did this get this burnt? Kaya replied coldly. Peter was pale even at first glance and opened his mouth stuttering. I, I put it in the oven but, it seems like I only preheated the lower side of the oven. I looked at the top and it still seemed raw so I kept it in, but the lower part, are you stupid? No, are you a spy? Preheat only the lower side. What were you doing without even checking that simple thing? You said you wanted to do the main. That you were confident. But is that only this dirtily burnt chicken breast that's similar to your face? I even feel sad calling this chicken breast. Peter. Answer me. Are you really stupid? If you are, then I would at least bear with it. Don't just keep your leech-like disgusting lips closed and reply to me, you fucking stupid. Kaya poured out curses severely. However, no one was planning to stop her. It was a team mission. And everyone's fates were in the line. But to make that kind of mistake in this kind of mission. Their luck wasn't good, it wasn't a thing to just let it pass. Peter twitched his brows for a moment and let out a sigh. It would be a lie to say that he didn't get angry at Kaya's words, but if he got angry in this kind of situation, it was obvious that he would only worsen it. Peter calmed his heart the most he could and tried his best to say some words. The burnt parts. I will remove the burnt parts and serve it. So give me some time, what? Are you crazy? Not only did the chicken breast get burnt, but did you also burn your brain? To present this kind of thing to the customer. Are you planning to kill someone? Please, think. They say that Indians are intelligent. I thought like that too, but maybe that isn't the case. Or only you are stupid. No, this isn't even a problem of being stupid or not. How dirty of a human are you to make the customers that came to eat your dish, eat this piece of coal? Honestly, I thought that I was the most straightforward person in this program, but I wasn't. Amazing. Really amazing. Peter couldn't reply back anything. He was slicing off the burnt parts of the chicken breast as if he didn't listen anything. Kaya was glaring at him for a moment and extended her hand. That hand grabbed the chicken breast Peter was slicing. Peter looked back at Kaya's hand sulking. Kaya said while grinding her teeth. Listen well. This is trash. And. Kaya emptied her hand. The thrown chicken breast fell in the trash bin. Kaya continued speaking. There are no chefs that serve trash on a dish. Unexpected fame, 3, end nov om translator. Subak proofreader. Mailed. Chapter 47. Unexpected fame, 4, you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 47. Unexpected fame, 4, the atmosphere got cold. 
Maybe they were surprised at Kaya's curses, or they agreed with her at getting angry, nobody from the team could open their mouths. And the red team looked at Kaya and whispered by themselves. And it was the same for Alan. As the judge in charge of the kitchen, he understood how Kaya was feeling and her rage. However the problem was after that. How will she lead her teammate after exploding in rage? Alan looked at what they were doing with a more serious look. Kaya took in deep breaths coarsely. Peter didn't reply anything back and just looked down at the chopping board. He was angry. To Kaya and to himself. Grand Chef was also an opportunity for him. An opportunity that presents only a couple of times. And right now, that opportunity was trying to leave from his sight. He couldn't not be angry. But he couldn't shout back. Because the responsibility of this disaster was on himself. Peter wasn't a stupid person as to not be able to think of that. I'm sorry. Peter said disheartenedly. Kaya, that was prepared to go another round at it if he was planning to refute her, in the end shut her mouth and glared at him. Only after a long while did she turn her head back. She also looked for a while at Hugo and opened her mouth. Hugo. The Asabuko, you can't present it first right. Are you kidding? Even if I don't do well from now on, I will at least need 20 minutes more for it to have a proper flavor. It's absolutely a no right now. In the end I will have to decide here. If I'm going to remove the middle main dish, or if I'm going to take care of it. Kaya looked at Peter. Peter wasn't saying a thing and just looking down. Kaya let out a sigh and said. What are you going to do? Decide quick. There's almost no time. The maximum we can get late is at most 15 minutes. Think about a dish you can make in that time. Wait, wait. Phew, Minjun. You too, think. If you have no ideas, we can't help it but to skip this part. I'm thinking. Zhou Minjun closed his eyes and fell in his thoughts. Because when he closed his eyes, the system's window was seen more clearly in that dark world. It soon became a habit when he started to design something. He didn't even know how he got that kind of habit. And actually, even if Peter's tandoori chicken breast was well roasted, it also became a problem. Because the masala sauce that was full of strong spices, was enough to kill all the flavor that came afterwards that it meant that it would sink the flavor of the soon upcoming asabuko. Peter said that he wanted to make salad to catch that heavy flavor, but Zhou Minjun was opposed to that. Because the score the system was showing him was only 6. It wasn't that good of a score. And Zhou Minjun was sure that the cause of that low score was the tandoori chicken breast. He did say that he was opposed to it, but Peter's attitude was just too stubborn. If it was right now, he thought that he would be able to change the menu completely. However it was a short thinking. Because that was only if he had enough time to think of a recipe. Even if he thought of many recipes in his head, there were no recipes that surpassed 6 points. It could only be that way. 15 minutes. They had to make a dish that didn't last longer than that. And thinking of a recipe that wouldn't disturb the flavor of the dish that would come after that and was delicious at the same time wasn't an easy thing to do. What about mixing mozzarella and fresh avocado and making a simple chicken steak? It would be too greasy. Preferably, Zhou Minjun stopped for a moment. The recipe he thought of in his head was only six points. However, in case he included cooking, he could raise the score to seven. Zhou Minjun opened his mouth nervously. Saying the truth, this dish is nothing special. However, it won't disturb the entire flow. First, roast chicken breast with olive oil. Then fry some shallots with that oil. And after that let's make a creamy cheese sauce using tarragon, lemon juice, herbs and goat cheese. The herbs and the lemon juice would catch the greasiness, and it won't be bad at all. Good. And the garnish. That. What was it? God damn it, I don't remember. Right. The salad Peter prepared. Let's just put it there. 
Do you think it's going to be okay? Good. Peter. You understood right. At Kaya's sharp voice, Peter just nodded with his face stiffened. Actually it was even harder to complain. Kaya slightly glanced at her surroundings. Carlos had made the bread a while ago, but was continuing to serve the customers in the hall. Chloe was also in the hall, and excluding Joe Minjun and Peter, everyone were doing their own dishes. Realistically, the only ones who could make the chicken dish were those three. Kaya's face hardened. Let's go with chicken tenderloin instead of chicken breast. We are roasting the tenderloin whole and applying the sauce Minjun said. What are you doing? Quickly put the pan on fire. Minjun, help. I will prepare the sauce. You and Peter do the chicken tenderloin. Will you be fine? Yes. Understood. After Peter replied, Joe Minjun immediately brought the ingredients. The first thing he did was to chop the shallots. Originally, he had planned to saute the shallots in the oil he had used to roast the chicken breast, no, now the chicken tenderloin, but he didn't have the time to do so. He cooked the shallots until it turned soft, and placed the herbs, goat cheese, lemon juice and tarragon on the pan. Although you would feel the smell of the cheese melting, to be delicious, but depending on the person, the longer you smelled it, the more it repugned you. And Zhou Minjun was the type to be repugned by it. Still, it was good that lemon juice and the tarragon's aroma caught the aroma of the cheese. Of course, it didn't matter for the customers. Because this was before they put the food in their mouths. Kaya. Is the tenderloin done? Soon. And the sauce. It's done. What should we do with the sauce? Should we spread it in the plate, or place it on top of the tenderloin? Of course you have to place it on top. Wait a moment. It will soon be done. Kaya was talking like that and was handling the frying pans that were all around. She seemed to be quite busy. But it was understandable. Because she was handling four frying pans by herself. And next to her was Peter that was sweating and turning the side of the chicken tenderloin. Joe Minjun moved his feet. It wasn't to Kaya but to Peter. Kaya seemed to do fine even if he left her alone, but he was insecure about Peter. He couldn't help but think that his mind got unstable and made a decisive mistake. But fortunately, no such things happened. Peter's chicken tenderloin was almost perfectly roasted. He couldn't also check the seasoning, but the exterior that got seared was good to see. It wasn't excessive, and wasn't lacking. Joe Minjun opened his eyes. Do you want me to give you a plate? Thank you. Wait a moment. Joe Minjun brought the plates and placed them on top of the countertop. And wondered for a moment. To place the salad below, or next to the tenderloin. But of course, he didn't take long. An oriental sauce was already applied in the salad. If he placed it below and the cheese sauce of the chicken got mixed, it was a result he didn't even want to imagine. Chloe came in when he had almost done the setting of the salads. She, who was pulling the cart, asked with a perplexed face. Ha! Huh. Shouldn't the next dish have been tandoori? It got burnt. So we changed it hurriedly. It should have been hard. Are you okay, Peter? At that moment Zhou Minjun couldn't help but get surprised. Normally, you couldn't help but get angry, but in that short moment when she worried about Peter instead of getting angry, she seemed really pretty. The man who marries Chloe should be happy for eternity. He wouldn't even feel the trial life gives you as a trial. Because right now, Peter was also sloppily smiling back at Chloe. It was at that moment. Kaya opened her mouth. Chloe. The dishes that are in your cart. They aren't the sea base ones right. Why shouldn't they be? They thankfully ate them all. They even wiped out the sauce. I'll get crazy. Doesn't that mean that the table is empty right now? Kaya's hands that was placing the chicken tenderloin in the dishes got busier. Chloe was calmly helping Kaya. 
Zhou Minjun poured the cheese sauce that was in the pan, on top of the chicken tenderloin. Kaya let out a sigh as if she was taking a breath. And then opened her mouth. Peter. Come with me. It's your dish. So you should explain. Understood. The two of them got out with the carts to serve. Zhou Minjun checked their actions while standing in the entrance of the hall. And the reactions of the customers weren't as bad as he had thought. Only, Emily's reaction was quite cold. She ate only a few bites and placed down the fork. A smile could be seen on her face, but she didn't seem satisfied. It couldn't be helped but for her to be like that. Even with Kaya's skills, she couldn't bring out the flavor of a hurriedly made recipe more than it could. And they had also made a difficult-to-handle dish like chicken tenderloin in a short time. However, the asabuko that came out after that, raised the sunken atmosphere. And at that moment, Zhou Minjun also got surprised. The cooking score of the asabuko was 8. Hugo's cooking level was 6. And the ideology Zhou Minjun had until now was that the utmost you could do if your cooking level was 6, was cooking a 7 points dish. He just thought like that. Because, when he started to make 7 points dish, it was when he had reached cooking level 6. But that wasn't the case. Hugo was certainly level 6, and the asabuko was 8 points. He didn't have the time to organize that situation. Because when lunch ended, they had to immediately prepare for dinner, and after cooking and serving, the time of judging soon approached. Zhou Minjun looked at the judges. The one who opened their mouth first was Emily. She looked at the participants' faces without a trace of smiling. You have done your best. And I think that it was the best you could have done. I can still see some lacking points, but even so, some dishes were really good. Chloe. Hugo. Anderson and Marco. You were the ones to have made me the happiest today. Zhou Minjun didn't get frustrated because he wasn't named. He felt it regrettable, but he understood. Because the names Emily called, had all displayed level 8 dishes. Chloe the sea base, Hugo the asabuco. Anderson displayed steamed lobster. And Marco made tart with shibust cream. There were exactly two in the red team, and two in the blue. So I wondered even more. But, I have decided. I'm, Emily looked at the chip that was in her hands. In front of her was placed one red box and one blue one with the votes of the forty customers. And her hands were directed at the blue box. It's the blue team. Actually, the satisfaction of the entire course was similar. But the dish that suited me the most of those four dishes was the asabuko. And the server who had made me feel most comfortable was Chloe. Chloe, I think that your smile as a person, and not only as a chef is a really valuable treasure. Maybe, if you open your own restaurant, and that exact same smile still remains. I think that I would become a regular customer of your restaurant. The, thank you. Chloe couldn't hide her embarrassment and happiness and smiled brightly. Emily smiled teasingly and pointed at her. But that smile is a bit weak. Be more confident, Chloe. You are an excellent chef. Regarding of the results of this competition, I'm already your fan. Remember that. The restaurant that receives love by an Epicurean usually has good results. Yes. Chloe clenched her two fists and yelled. Emily smiled brightly and stepped back. Joseph walked to the front. He didn't hesitate for a moment and put the chip in the red box. It happened so instantly, so the participants and even the casting crew were all dumbfounded. Joseph said in a calm voice. I won't be showing favoritism with the vote. Even so, the votes of we, judges, are irrelevant comparing to the 43. And the reason I picked the red team is simple. I ate the red team's cooking more deliciously than the blue team. Especially Marco, your tart was perfect. I am convinced that you are the participant that makes bread better than anyone else here. The words Emily said to Chloe, I would like to tell you the same things. Be confident. 
it's also good to be prideful. Because the decisive factor I picked the red team was your tart. Marco didn't reply. He couldn't. His big eyes were filled with tears and he was sniffing right now. Anderson, that was next to him, put on a hesitating face and patted his back. Joseph stepped back. It was Alan's turn. Alan said with a cold and harsh voice. I don't know about what was placed in the dishes, but you were a spectacle today. You were dumber and noisier than a monkey, and some team even changed the recipe in the middle. What I am evaluating today is not the dish, but your knives, chopping board and frying pan. Nobody replied. Peter especially had his head dropped with a pale face. He could only do that. Alan lifted his chip. The red team should also know well. That the blue team did a really stupid thing. Kaya. Reply as a head chef. What is the meaning of changing the recipe? It means that the food is changing. It's similar but different. It means that the order got changed. But of course, today it wasn't an order, but a predefined menu. However if it was on another situation, you wouldn't be receiving money, and even if you got cursed you wouldn't be able to talk back at all. Chloe's smile. Service. What's the meaning of that? Of you made a mistake in the most basic thing that's cooking. Kaya didn't reply back and dropped her head. She wasn't thinking of handing down all of the responsibility to Peter. Because in the time Peter was making the mistake, she didn't check so it was also partially her fault. Alan slowly put his hand that was holding the chip in the red box. Alan continued with his cold face. The reason I am voting for the red team today is not because they did well. Only because the opposing blue team acted really stupidly. Remember that. The food is made in the kitchen. And if that process is Corel's, then the results will also be it. Become perfect. You are the doctors and the ingredients are the patients. You have to be more perfect than anyone else. Because the customers aren't expecting for a mistake. Peter bit his lips. It seemed like those words were all directed at him like arrows. Alan checked at Peter for a moment, then shut his mouth and fell back. Joseph let out a sigh. When that sigh was slowly heard by everyone, his voice rang again. We will start counting the votes. Unexpected fame, for, end translator. Subak proofreader. Mailed. Chapter 48. Unexpected Fame, 5, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 48. Unexpected Fame, 5, Gulp. A gulping sound was heard. It was Zhou Minjun. He looked at the chips that were coming out of the boxes with a serious face. Blue Team 1, Red Team 1. Blue Team 11, Red Team 11. It was at the moment when they each had 17 chips with a total of 34 coming out when Alan opened his mouth. Now, one of the boxes doesn't have any more chips. The participants just heard that as a declaration. Alan looked at Jacob. Jacob. Do you think that your team will win? Yes. And what's the reason for you to be saying that? I believe in my teammates. Do you think that you have performed the role of the head chef well? It's a difficult question for me to answer. I think that my teammates would be having the answer. Alan just looked at Jacob. His eyes seemed intricate and nervous rather than gentle. Jacob didn't evade his sight. Alan said in a low tone of voice. If you have to pick someone from your team that performed the best, who would you pick? It's troublesome. It would be too simple to say that everyone did well. Fine. I will pick Marco. Because it was the only dish we didn't even have to wash. Then, if you have to pick the person that performed the worst, who would you pick? Jacob couldn't reply immediately. He could only be like that. Because if he named someone, in the end, that person would only get hurt. And there were no particular people that made such a mistake as to bad mouth like that. Jacob replied with an awkward voice. I will pick myself. 
I tried to adjust to the head chef's seat, but I don't get the feeling to have completed my role well. At those words, Alan didn't say anything. In the middle of the nervousness, only silence could be heard, and only after a while did Alan smile. You seem to be replying trying to evade my question, but your answer seems to be quite true. I won't refute that. I will only say a word. Jacob. You have done the best as a head chef. Remember that. Thank you. As the conversation between the two ended, Kaya's face became ugly. Because it was obvious who Alan was going to target next. Alan turned his head to look at Kaya. Chloe that was next to her, wiped the sweat that was on Kaya's forehead with a towel nervously. Alan that was looking at them expressionlessly opened his mouth. Kaya. I will also make the same question to you. Do you think that you are going to win? I don't know. Because in the end, you just have to look at the results. So why are you asking me this? If you ask me if I'm going to lose I would reply that I wasn't confident, but if I say that I'm going to win, then it will be a proofless confidence. Isn't that right? At Kaya's bold question, almost all of the people that were next to her laughed bitterly. They knew well about Kaya's temperament, but they never thought that she would be able to speak so challengingly to a judge like Alan. Was it a bluff? Or did she only know to reply like that? Alan didn't get angry. Because those words weren't so harsh for him to get angry. She had just hit the mark. And Kaya's eyes were also slanting, but there was no need to point out things like this one by one. Because he was a judge and not a teacher. Alan said unconcernedly. I won't mind about what you reply. Just do so. Are you confident? I told you. That you have to see to know. I don't know. Alan's eyes twitched. Saying the truth, he felt a bit perplexed. Because he never thought that he would listen to this sort of answer. However, now that he looked clearly, it seemed that Kaya that had said those words seemed more perplexed. It seemed like she had never expected to say those things that sharply. Alan took a short breath and opened his mouth. Then, I will go with the next question. Who was the most excellent chef? Hugo and Chloe. Oh, right. I understand. It was only one person. Chloe. I will go with Chloe. Actually their dishes were similarly delicious. However, if you take into account the serving, Chloe was better. Because she smiles really brightly. She's cute and pretty unlike me. The customers like her very much. Don't you think that if you fix that temperament of yours, the customers will like you very much for how you look? So, did you fix it chef? Your mean character. Alan smiled instead of replying. Saying the truth, it was something he shouldn't be saying. Because he wasn't the type to smile brightly at the customers. Alan continued his questions. Even he wasn't accustomed to asking questions, but because this was a broadcast, he couldn't just let it pass. This is the last question. Who's the teammate that performed the worst? At that moment, many participants unconsciously looked at Peter. It was understandable. Because he was the person who had made a shocking scene like burning his dish. Kaya didn't try to look good and seem considerate by not saying his name. Because whatever she did, it was still a miserable situation. Rather than a sloppy consideration, it would be more comfortable to say one honest word. He burnt the fine chicken. It would be difficult not saying that it was Peter. And what about you? Don't you think that you were lacking as head chef letting him do that kind of thing? When did I say that I didn't have any fault? I was just comparing. The stupid teammate that can't even properly preheat the oven and burn his own dish, and the head chef that couldn't properly check that teammate. Even if you see it objectively, the most stupid one should be the teammate. It was an excessively honest statement. The casting crew were looking at this situation like a funny scene and laughing, but Jo Min Jun that was looking at her couldn't help but feel nervous. Because the not pretentious honesty can be seen as rude. 
and the public used to focus on the bad points rather than the good ones. She was more concerned and afraid of bad comments rather than the judges, and the only words that came out of her were only those kinds of things. Of course, her very existence would make for a funny character, but the time that character gets accepted by the media won't be short. Because they already felt rejected when seeing the scene of Jo Minjun and Kaya. Kaya opened her mouth. Perhaps, did I have to reply that I was the worst one? I didn't really get a script. Enough. Let's finish the interview here. Alan talked like that and put his hand on the red box. And Emily that was next to him also put her hand in the blue box and said. One of our hands should be empty. If my hand is empty the red team wins, but if Alan's hand is empty the blue team will win. Count down, will you do it? Now, count to three. At Emily's words, everyone yelled together. And it was the same for Jo Minjun. The voices that were heard were filled with expectation. One. Two. Three. After the announcement of the result ended, all of the participants went to the interviewing room. And Jo Minjun was not an exception. When he got out of the interview after facing Martin like usual, he saw Chloe that was standing in the hall hitting the wall with her heel. As Jo Minjun got close to her, Chloe turned her head. Did you finish? What are you doing here? HM, it would be weird to go to the kitchen. The atmosphere is really down. And Kaya. Ugh. Looking that you are taking care of her, it really seems like you are siblings. Don't worry. She's in the interviewing room. Okay. Zhou Minjun leaned his back in the wall standing next to Chloe. The cold of the concrete could be felt through his thin clothes. Chloe opened her mouth. I felt it today. That cooking in the kitchen of a restaurant and cooking in your home is different. I didn't think that it would be this difficult. Even so, it was entertaining. I had fun. Looking at the customers eating my dish happily. It was a first. It's the same for me. Even if I get disqualified in Grand Chef later on, I think that I would be able to protect my dream. Jo Minjun nodded at those words. At first, he came all the way to the United States simply to get approved by his parents. Of course, he also wanted to stand in the stage he had admired. But this competition gave him more than he had thought. Improving your cooking skills, and being surrounded by good chefs. And the most important point was that he could polish his attitude and passion towards cooking. Zhou Minjun smiled faintly and opened his mouth. The competition, I think I came well. It was the best decision I have made in my life. It's the same for me. Chloe looked at Zhou Minjun and smiled brightly. And after that, the conversation stopped for a long while. They didn't have particularly anything to talk about, and the silence was soft rather than being awkward. He thought that he didn't need to say something to break the ice. But just like if there is a start, there is an end, there was also an end to that silence. Chloe opened her mouth. Now that I see, what are you going to do about telling your parents? You said that you were going to tell them. The dream of becoming a chef. I have to tell them. Because I can't just hide it from them forever regardless of the results. And on top of that. Jo Minjun smiled. This mission, we won. I have to keep the promise. I get the feeling that it's not a promise. Chloe just scratched her cheeks. The mission was won by the blue team, Kaya's team. 17 to 26. The blue team was 26. The victory was so overwhelming it made them dumbfounded. Thinking about Peter's mistake, they could only think of it as something dramatic and a turnaround. Jo Minjun couldn't forget about the red team's faces that were half sure about victory. The victory, wasn't it because of your serving? They customers wouldn't have simply evaluated with just the dishes. Nah, would they do that? Chloe laughed and shook her head. However Jo Minjun didn't say that as simply a joke. 
Just like Emily evaluated, it wasn't weird to say that Chloe's smile captivated the customers' hearts. Because the thing called service didn't simply end at simply serving your cooking in a plate. It's the truth. If it was me, when I ate something that was similar, I would have picked the team with prettier chefs. Stop it. Stop saying crafty words and contact your parents. Ah, uh, shouldn't you because of the time difference? No. Right now, it should be morning, Zhou Minjun hesitated for a moment and took out his handphone. It was at that moment when he turned on the turned off screen. Zhou Minjun's face froze. Chloe that looked at his expression looked at his handphone, and even she frowned. Although she couldn't know the Korean contents, at least she could know the numbers and the missed call marks. 21 missed calls. Chloe looked at Joe Minjun nervously. Wait a moment. When he checked the contents, 10 calls were from his mother, 5 from his father, and the remaining 6 from her sister Joe Era. And he also had countless messages. Joe Minjun looked at the ceiling for a moment, and looked down at his handphone again. Then let out a sigh. Mom. Minjun, people are telling me weird things. Mom. Did you go to a cooking competition? Mom. If you see the messages call me. Dad. Minjun. Are you busy? Joe Era. Appa, you said that you were traveling but what are you doing right now? Mom and Dad are really serious right now. There were countless more messages, but it was difficult to read them. Joe Minjun closed his handphone. Chloe extended her hand and firmly grabbed Joe Minjun's shoulders. Joe Minjun opened his mouth with a dark face. I think that they, no. Unexpected fame, 5, end translator. Subak proofreader. Mailed. Chapter 49. Unexpected fame, 6, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 49. Unexpected fame, 6, know what? The one who replied wasn't Chloe, but Kaya. They didn't know when the interview had ended, but Kaya approached them and asked bluntly. Chloe glanced at Joe Minjun. He pointed at his handphone and said. My parents called. It seems like they know that I came to this competition. Ha! Huh. Did I miss here? Is that really serious? It's not something serious, but things got messy. Eh? Because I still didn't tell them that I wanted to become a chef. At those words Kaya she rested her chin in her hands. She frowned for quite a while looking at the floor and opened her mouth as if she didn't understand. I don't get it at all. Not telling them is not telling them, and if they know, they know. Why, are they opposed to it? Not until now. But if I tell them so, they will. And that's not the problem. Because regardless of what they say, I'm still planning to walk this path. What I'm worrying about are my parents. Because they will worry be distressed because their son dreams something beyond what he can reach. They aren't even children, but aren't they being too harsh? It seems like they are overprotective. It's good to avoid all the trouble you can. And it's also tiresome. Evading like that must be more tiresome. At least in my eyes, it seems stupid. Because only you end up having it difficult. At Kaya's words he couldn't reply back. Saying the truth, calling it stupid was also right. Maybe it was better to collide with his parents head on and beat them. However Joe Minjun already had done so. That he liked cooking, that he could do it. He yelled like that and left his job. But what were the results? In the end, nobody could make their parents to feel assured. Every time he saw his parents, he saw their worry and anxiety behind their smiles. He didn't want to repeat that. So he wanted to show them good results and at the same time convince them. That their son had this much talent, skills and potential. But it was too late for him to say something. Because getting to know through the internet, and listening to their son himself was two different things. Chloe patted his back and said. First, go and make them a call. You also make me worry right now. 
Yeah. You go on ahead. I will go later. Good luck. With Kaya's transparent cheer, the two walked towards the kitchen. Zhou Minjun sat on a sofa that was on the side of the hall, and placed his handphone on his ear. Riaying, re theme. The tone stopped. But there were no voices. Zhou Minjun opened his mouth first under that silence. It's me. I have been watching your broadcast until now. Why didn't you tell me? I'm sorry. I wanted to tell you after I achieved good results. These few months you have been cooking so suddenly, honestly, I can only say that it was unexpected. How did you know? News about you appeared. They weren't big, but in small letters. Zhou Minjun that is representing Korea in Grand Chef was the title. Era got surprised and told me, but honestly, I thought that it wasn't you. I don't know the reason why you had to hide it from us and go and participate in that competition, did we do something wrong? What wrong could you have done? Just, I wanted to tell you after I got some results. Mom. Zhou Minjun gulped. His nervousness was felt even through his handphone. Zhou Minjun said in a determined voice and broke the ice. I am going to become a chef. It wasn't that he wanted to become one, or was planning to. He was confirming it right now. That voice was filled with passion and affection towards cooking, so Li Haizian couldn't say anything. Zhou Minjun didn't prolong the talk. Because those words were the only things he had wanted to say. And Li Haizian understood that. Her voice rang through his phone. She seemed to be as calm as possible. It's difficult for me to say something right now. Minjun, you two should have thought about it a lot. I will also think along with you. The only thing I want to say is that. Mom and Dad are always cheering for you. Of course, we are worrying for you as much as we are cheering. I know. The broadcast. I enjoyed it. Now that I think about it, I get the feeling that you practiced a lot without us noticing. Did you? Yes. He could only reply like that. Because it would be weird for him to have those skills without having practiced. Li Haizian continued. What I can say right now. Do well and come back. I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Don't say those things. Do well. And don't get while cooking. And if you have already gone, just win it. Understand. Yes. His voice was held back. And Lee Hyson also noticed that. She hurried and wrapped up the conversation. Ah, thinking about it, I forgot that I had an appointment. I will hang up. Min Jun. You know that I love you right. Love you. Yes, me too. Even before he could reply back, the call ended. Zhou Minjun bit his lips and looked at his handphone. Her reaction was a bit different to what he had thought. But of course, it was obvious that she was worried. However, Li Haizian didn't think of his dream to be thoughtless. Maybe she would be thinking like that for herself, but at least she wasn't stopping him in his path. Why could that be? But he didn't need to think long. Right. The results already showed. The results were he relieved his parents. But they got to sloppily know about it through a news. Saying that he was getting fame overseas and that he was focused on his dreams were just too heavy. Zhou Minjun looked at the ceiling for a moment. It was different than before. His skills were such that he could relieve his parents. And thinking about that burnt his chest. Zhou Minjun lifted his head. Because if he didn't do so, he would be crying right now. After calming down himself in the hallway, Zhou Minjun entered the kitchen. As he got to the second floor, Chloe approached him as if she was waiting. Did you do well? Yeah. Better than expected. What a relief. Chloe was putting a more nervous face than Zhou Minjun. She calmed down and let out a sigh of relief. Looking at her acting like that made him feel grateful and moved him. He scratched the narrow part of the nose and turned his head. 
the members of the red team were finishing the interview and getting in the kitchen. Zhou Minjun made eye contact with Marco. Maybe if he wasn't black, his face would be frightened pale. It could clearly be seen that he was putting that kind of face. It was understandable. Because the disqualifying missions were mixed with themes you couldn't just win with cooking skill. Kaya's and Zhou Minjun's tag mission demanded team play, and guessing the contents of the fried pot also required an outstanding sense of taste. What kind of mission would be? Zhou Minjun tried to remember. But he couldn't. He could only do so. Because what Zhou Minjun remembered were mostly missions related to Kaya. And in this mission, she wasn't included. Anderson seems rather calm. Chloe mumbled as if he was amazing. Just like she had said, Anderson didn't seem to be nervous at all. His confidence on being able to beat any kind of mission was shown on his face. Kaya grumbled and said. He's got a disdainful face. Did you still not reconcile? Aside from reconciling, I just don't like him. I understand what you are trying to say, Zhou Minjun laughed bitterly. She seemed to still hold a grudge because of the previous three-course mission. Because she was the one who was in more danger for having prepared the appetizer. Shu, it started. Chloe lifted her finger. Just like she said, Joseph came and was raising his voice. We will start the disqualifying mission. The theme of this mission was omelet. And the standard of the evaluation was simple. To make a pretty omelet. It was simple but even the pro chefs found it difficult to do so. Because if you don't usually make omelet, even if you were a pro, it was difficult to give it proper shape. And they had to cook it in the same way. Using cooking oil and butter, and cooking beaten eggs without using milk or cream. However, the difficult point in cooking omelet was right here. You needed quite a bit of experience to know when to stop cooking the egg when it starts to scramble, and to roll the scrambled egg little by little was also difficult to do. And the most difficult part was on the use of fire. If you put the fire a little stronger than necessary, the exterior won't cook properly and get roasted. An omelette didn't need the exterior to be seared. And the things omelette demanded didn't end there. When you sliced omelette, the inside had to be soft. On top of that, you had to use the sides of the frying pan to give it a round shape. To take into account all of these things and make it in five minutes, made people pale when they were not used to make it. There were no miracles. The people who were confident made omelette based on that attitude, and those who weren't made a mess. Anderson was the former. He kept a confident attitude from the start, and made a perfect omelette with no mistakes. His omelette that was yellow a little chick didn't have any mistakes to point out, and the exterior was made just like pudding. It was an omelette nobody could point the mistakes. However Marco was the contrary. He had a nervous face since the start and in the end, made an omelette that was ripped in various places. At least the exterior was yellow, but in the end it couldn't be called a success. Zhou Minjun looked seriously at him. It wouldn't be weird for him to get disqualified. Although the other participants weren't much better than him, they also didn't make it better than Marco. And five minutes passed like that. Alan raised his voice. Everybody stop and bring your dishes. In front of the judges, there were nine dishes placed in the countertop. Alan approached with a casual face and pushed the dishes. But it wasn't that he pushed all of the dishes. It was only for the omelettes that were perfectly cooked and weren't ripped. And those omelettes numbered only three. Alan grabbed the knife and sliced the omelette. Two were softly made and the remaining one was lumped together like gyre and gym. Alan let out a sigh. There are only two omelettes from nine that are worthy to be called as omelettes. Who are the owners of these dishes? At Alan's question, Jacob and Anderson raised their hands. Joseph that was next to them opened his mouth. I get the feeling that you make omelette usually. I didn't have anything to point out. You two can go upstairs. You passed. Thank you. The two of them replied in a low voice and moved. 
they couldn't jump out of joy for consideration of their previous teammates. Emily looked at the remaining seven omelets. And then let out a sigh. To pick the worst three from these. It's hard. Can you do it? Honestly, it doesn't make me want to eat them. The only good point is that the exterior got cooked well. Excluding that the seasoning feels a bit heavy, it is basically an omelet. However, if inside of the omelet is a raw egg or a sloppy gym, I wouldn't be able to handle it. I think that it's profaning the egg. For the person to be saying all of these things to be Emily, those were really harsh words. Because she was the type to normally say good things. Zhou Minjun bit his lips and looked at Marco. The one who was the kindest and gentle was Marco. He didn't want to see getting disqualified like this. Marco, please. And his feelings weren't different to Chloe or Kaya. They received much consideration from Marco, and they knew well about his skills. For him to have made the best dish, but get disqualified for his team, was a really unfortunate thing. It was at that moment. Marco. If you pass I will present you a girl. Zhou Minjun let out a laugh and turned his head. It was Kaya. She opened her eyes sharply as if saying what was he looking at and said. But of course, it's not Chloe. Don't worry Chloe. Ye, yeah. Is there something to worry about meeting me? Of course. Think about your big body. Marco's face sulked. Emily, that was looking at them, let out a sigh. Did she have to get angry at this or laugh? Alan who was blunt, also didn't know how to react at this. Emily opened her mouth. Marco looking that you have the interest of the females, I'll announce first your dish. Your omelette is ripped all over the place. It's obviously not a good thing to look at. Do you agree? Yes. It's a relief that you do. Right. The appearance is certainly not good. Then, how well is it cooked? Emily sliced Marco's omelette with her fork. As soon as it split, the soft eggs inside of it flowed out. Emily smiled brightly. It didn't seem very different than Anderson's or Jacob's omelette. It's just like you see. It's perfectly cooked. It's not excessive, nor lacking. Even if you can't present it in a restaurant, it's good to eat it in your house. What would this mean, dot at those words, Marco said cautiously. He was rubbing his fingers. Uh, did I, pass? Wrong. The answer is, lose fat, dot. Emily replied bluntly. Marco's face became weird. He didn't understand at all what Emily was trying to say. Looking at Marco being like that, Emily smiled. If you want to meet a woman you have to first lose fat. Unexpected fame, 6, end translator. Subak proofreader. Mailed.